Just very quiet on the way in. Hello. I don't know how to process that. <laughs> What's very quiet? Oh, the the count in after the count in. You mean? Yeah, it's just like I can start piping silent. you guys the music if you want, so you can hear you can hear that coming in. I was just enjoying Jesse like dancing. He was he was getting down. Hotel Jesse is just a, a party. Yes. Is what that is. It's just a party mm-hmm. man. Is that what it is? I think Hotel so. Hotel Jesse is chill. Well, Wait, no, but we saw chill. Jesse chill. turn. Chill and party are two different things. You know? Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. See, look at him. Look at I him. D- he can't stop moving. He's dancing. He's dancing fool. I do remember Jesse getting the, the filter one time. I'm wondering when Jesse heel turns. I don't know. He got a haircut, though. I know that. Look at that haircut. Oh. Yeah, you got a live. When you live show, you got to get a haircut. It's true. That's Man. Man, I've got I've got mad anxiety about I gotta get a I, I still don't have a person that cuts my hair regularly here in St. Louis and I've lived here for coming up on four years or some shit like that. I just gotta find a person, you know. I gotta take the dive and possibly get a bad haircut and I'm not looking forward to it. You just gotta you gotta like uh figure out what's for you, get a shit haircut, call it a life. That's what I'm thinking about. That's yeah. what I'm thinking about. You're look you are lucky you're a guy. Not true. much is expected of your hair. True. You're a, you're a post-30 man. It's That's all true. downhill from here, dude. It's Just very like, true. get it done. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I need to. I need to. You're spinning yeah, truth. You're not, you're not like 22 with a waff. <laughs> you don't have like a thing going on here. You're you're fine. Yeah. It's all right. No one cares anymore. Yeah. Yeah. They're just happy you have hair. I've got two things on my mind, Jesse. One, getting a haircut. And two... Watching the Spider-Man red carpet premiere tonight on TikTok at 5.50 p.m. Pacific. I got to download TikTok to watch this one, Jesse. TikTok. On TikTok? It's premiere. It's on TikTok. No sacrifice is worth that. I don't know. And wait, no reward is worth that sacrifice. I don't know. I like the first one. No sacrifice is worth that. (laughs) That too. No sacrifice is worth that. I'm wondering if they're going to stream it on any other. Because I, I, I got to think out of all the red carpets that I've watched in the past, I don't know, year, we've got like Eternals. That was whatever. Uh, we got the Black Widow one. I think there was a Hawkeye one that I watched as well. This one's going to be like the busiest one, the biggest one. All right. Like people are going crazy for Spider-Man. Uh, Isn't it spoilers though, dude? Well, I don't know. Like I don't know if they're like. Showed up. I don't know if they're like wheeling out all the big actors. Why wouldn't an actor in a movie? Because they were paid not to. Maybe. Maybe. You never know. You never know. But we'll watch tonight. Maybe. It's just gonna be Andrew Garfield. Like I'm here to support my friends. <laughs> you know, Spider Man's. It's he's. We've got a real long lineage of Spider Man, and I just want to support all the fans out here. You know, yeah. they've been watching these films for ten years, and uh, I love Spider Man. Yeah, woo! And then he's just gonna walk off. <laughs> and that'll be that. That'll be that. Uh, Can we get into? Some very minor episode spoilers in regard, but it's related to this topic that you're talking about. Sure. What are we? What are we spoiling? What are we? What are we jumping into? An appearance in the newest Hawkeye episode. Oh yeah, yeah. Did the you, the did actress you see already... the news regarding that. Like she got blocked from from yeah. Instagram from she... posting about it because people were so angry. Yeah. That she talked about her own appearance. <laughs> she fucked up. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I was like, she was. I do have to respect that she like held her ground on it, though. She was oh. just like, "Sorry, I was excited." That's what, that's what I love oh. that she did not apologize. She was not like, "I'm so sorry." I posted the spoiler. She was like, "Sorry that I was fucking excited for a show I was in, and then you losers reported it." Sorry, and I was like, 
you know what? Respect. I I don't hate that. Yeah, I don't like. No, I get it. I don't like. Yeah, she's she's excited. I, I feel... was in a Marvel show. I'd be posted about it too. I'd be freaking excited. Yeah, yeah. I it's we're getting into this weird like, uh, and I think maybe we've been here longer than I realized into this weird stage of Marvel where people showing up in a show. They're trying so hard to like keep it a secret, but there's no way in hell they're going to just because of how the world works these days. Uh, and like almost everything that they try to do, they're going to try and like every, every new show coming up, they're going to try and do that. Like, oh my God, I can't believe uh, Hulk is in She Hulk. Like, they're going to hold on, blah, blah, blah. Or, I can't believe uh, General Ross or whatever is in fucking She Hulk. Uh, we got to hide the act. Like, Anything, mm-hmm. any new show is going to be like, we got to hide X or Y and Z potentially from appearing uh, anywhere, social media, whatever, until we get the big reveal on the show. And it's just going to be impossible. There's no way they can do that. I think they should just be upfront about it and include it in part of the, uh, or may- maybe not include it, but just like, let it be. Let the actors celebrate whatever they want to celebrate. If you're already following Florence on, uh, what was it? TikTok or what? What was it? Instagram, uh, Instagram, if you're already following on Instagram, you know, fuck it. Who cares? That's on you. <laughs> if you seek out these actors and actresses promoting their work, that's on you. If they spoil some shit, remind me when we get to actually talking about the show, there's something I noticed that's been bugging me, but I don't know if I'm just crazy or if it really happened, but when we get to it, okay. Just remind me that I like saw through the matrix code or something. I don't know what I saw, but I kept rewinding and I didn't know where to look again. So I want to put it out there to the internet sleuths. Figure okay. this out for me. All right. We'll get there. We don't have that much, uh, that much news. It is Spider-Man week. Spider-Man comes out on Thursday. Uh, the official runtime is two hours, 28 minutes and one second. And the credits are 14 minutes long. Now, I don't... Jeez. Are credits always usually that long? That seems long. Like, do I really sit there for 15 minutes after every movie? Um, so, that's two questions. The first one, <laughs> are credits really that long? Uh, maybe? It doesn't... It feels like that's very long. Second, do you sit through that no matter what? Yes. No I ma- do you sit would through sit it. Through I yes, do sit yeah. through it, but I just, I, part of me refuses to believe that I'm like thumbing through Twitter for 14 <laughs> minutes after a movie. That's wild to we, me. Well, can we compare it to, uh, I don't know, like the credits for Endgame? Let, yeah, let's see. How long are the credits for Endgame? And those would be longer too, because they did like a send off. You would assume so. Uh, 12 minutes was Endgame. Well, interesting. Yeah. 12 minutes. So, I don't know. Maybe they have, maybe because now they're getting both Sony and Marvel in the credits of this, so there's just a shit ton of people to thank, or to credit, not necessarily thank. I don't know. Hard to say. That or there's just like some crazy post... There, there's been a couple uh, like rumors and leaks. I'm not going to go into them about the post credit scenes, but I, I have not read them myself, but maybe there's some crazy shit going on. There's probably some crazy shit going on, right? I think there would have to be some crazy shit going on <laughs> with this movie. It's got to be something. Who knows? Who could say? We'll have to see the movie. When, when are you guys, by the way, did you guys get uh, like opening night uh, tickets no. for it? You didn't? Okay. Jesse, did you? Oh, I didn't buy them, but I got invited. So I'm I was like, yes, please. I would like to go. Oh, oh to yeah, like I'm a friend group or to a red carpet? <laughs> to a red carpet? No, they ain't inviting my ass to a red carpet. I, don't know, I mean it's possible. To open like sweatpants, like, hey, I saw the spider man. I saw the, I was... <laughs> I saw the kind of funny guys wires. got invited to red carpet. So you know, some stranger things have happened. No, uh, they would never invite me. Okay. So you're going with like a friend group then? Mm-hmm. When are you, when's yeah. your when's your uh your viewing? What day? Thursday, nine something PM. Okay. 
Hollywood, right. California. So you're going to be in a hyped up theater. I don't think mine's going to be super packed. Uh, Bronze, do you know what day you're going yet? I'm going Friday. Oh, yours will probably be packed then. You probably have a packed. Day. So I'm going to experience the film differently than I think both of you. You guys are going to have huh? like a full on crowd. I'm going to be there with like me and Aaron and probably some fucking old people on a on a Sunday. <laughs> See, I'm jealous because. I don't know. The way Jesse's watching it is probably like my nightmare because every like I'm one of those introverts that likes one or two people with me to go do stuff. Mm. And so anytime I've tried to watch a film with friends, I'll ask one person. I'll be like or two people be like, hey, you want to go see the Spider-Man movie? And they're like, sure. And so it's like, oh, what if we invited this person? Oh, so and so is bringing this person. Oh, so and so is bringing this person and this person. And then it's like 18 fucking people. And then they're like, oh, so-and-so is running late. Let's save them a seat. And I was like, I would rather shoot myself in the head than Whoa. have to tell every single person that goes by, oh, sorry, the seat's taken. Hold on. What I type of barbarian uh, visited theater are you going to that doesn't have assigned seating bronze? What is this 1998? So this What's is the other problem. Here? This is the other problem. I like to go to the expensive theater where they have assigned seating and food. Half of yeah. my wonderful friends don't see the value in that. So oh. I was like, do I have broke friends? Do I need to get some rich streamer friends that will pay the extra money to go to the assigned seating theater? Wait, are, so the, so then like I don't even get to go to my... More? Like, it's not that it's much like, more money. It's Take, like eight here. It's like eight years. What, eight in terms of just like a movie ticket's eight bucks for a normal ticket? Or eight? No, no, no. It's like eight, eight to ten dollars more. Really? Yeah. Wait, what do y'all yeah. pay for? I'm, I paid. Uh, no, honey, I don't want to rent a theater again. Okay, subs are down, Aaron. I can't rent a theater. Again. Well, I'm with Aaron. Rent a theater and invite me, Aaron. What please, <laughs> I'm not. Aaron, this. please do not make me watch films with these barbarians anymore. I'm not doing this. That's too much. That's too much. Jesse's gonna have to get some more tea <laughs> with all this high society talk over there. Um, <laughs> Yes, I should. Yes, I shall. For my carafe. <laughs> oh my god! You should. You should uh, call down to the front desk and ask if someone can come pour your tea and just see, <laughs> <laughs> see how that goes. I have a conversation about which theater I shall rent, and I choose <laughs> to have uh, one of your your men come and pour my coffee. <laughs> Jesse, if you rented a theater, I'd buy the ticket to L.A. Like I'd fly down. Can I tell you, that's, for my reason, birthday, that's what we did. For my birthday a few years back, uh, what, 2019? Uh, because John Wick 3 came out on my birthday, I rented an entire theater, invited all my local friends, and we yeah. watched it together. It was lovely. Yeah. It's not that pricey to rent it, especially, well, if we were doing doing uh, peak COVID, wow, I placed a couple R's in wrong places there. If we were doing peak COVID uh, theater renting, it'd probably be a lot cheaper than... Um, than what I was renting theater for back in the day. They were. I just expensive. did the math. I was like, all right, I could throw a party. I could invite a bunch of people. I could like have them over at my house. Nah. I could go to a bar. We could do a thing. Nah. And I was like, this theater was, it was a, the smallest theater they had. I think it was like 100 seats, which is great. I don't have 100 friends. Yeah. And it was like, uh, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks. I was like, okay. <laughs> I'll pay for that. Yeah, they're not that oh. bad. Um, but yeah, I'm, I I I think we're paying like eighteen dollars a, a ticket, a movie theater That's ticket. That's what I'm saying. Tickets are so expensive. They're I, fucking expensive. Yeah. And so because I'm such get... like a a COVID a nerd, uh, or, or uh, not nerd, but I'm so COVID worried that uh, I buy four tickets instead of two, so we don't have to sit next to people on our left and right. So. <laughs> So it's 80 bucks to go see a fucking movie. Oh, yes. No, I buy my too. Yeah. Yeah. I know that's bougie as fuck, but hey, I don't want to sit next to people. Look, I understand. I uh, I wouldn't have gone to see it opening night had I not been invited by friends who were like, bro, we're getting tickets. And I was like, I don't have to do anything for this. And they were like, no. I was like, oh, car. Yeah. So that's, that's what I was like. All right. I'm in. Yeah. But normally... The last movies I've seen in theaters, I went and saw it at 11 o'clock at night, and there were three people in the theater with me. And I was like... That's how our experiences safe, have been. Feeling secure. Yeah. I think Sp Spider-Man seemed... I mean, I know, at least for a fact, that our 
I went to buy tickets the morning after they went on sale. They went on sale at like 10 p.m. on a Sunday. And it was right before MCU crew because I was like, oh, fuck, I saw tickets are on sale. I went to look and they were completely sold out on Thursday yeah. and on Friday. Completely sold out. So, yeah, so it's a Sunday viewing for me. But it's maybe that first big movie that people like go back. You know what? I'm all down for like an attempted return to normalcy. Have we earned it? No. Nah. No, so like, absolutely right, not. See what happens. Well, and it, it's about to, uh, I mean, this might be the the one time where it, it could be a little bit normal because I think it's about to get crazy again. It seems like it at least. But that might just be the fear mongering. Who knows? Who could say? We're not going to predict the future. This ain't a show about COVID. Talk about Spider-Man. And Spider-Man The other things. pandemic. <laughs> um, what was the other thing that I saw? Oh, yeah. I was talking to Jesse about this on the topic of Spider-Man. Uh, they're getting a little bit more loosey-goosey with the clips that they're showing. Uh, there's a clip that came out this morning uh, talking about Spider-Man. Stay away, Internet. Stay away. And they're spoiler. saying that in the film, it's not necessarily a big spoiler or a spoiler at all. They're saying Doctor Strange is casting a spell with runes. And the idea is that in WandaVision, we learned that when you cast a spell in the MCU with runes, it means that only the person that cast that spell can use magic within that area that the spell was cast. That's what the runes signify. Uh, right, but what is that? And in the film, he's doing it in the center of the Manhattan Harbor, it looks like. So I don't know what the fuck he's doing or when this takes place. But it, maybe he's oh, like... Oh, it's probably when he's like, I can't, they're coming through. Like that scene. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's high flying in this one. I guess I could show this if you just want to see the image that I'm looking at. So I would love to see this. Yeah, yeah let, me, let me pull up the trailer. Avert here. your eyes, bronze. Yeah. Look away. It's only an 18-second spot. Let's see. Look away. Here, okay. Right? Perfect. Avert That's your eyes. Thing. That's it right oh, there. Oh, yeah, he's doing it. And this looks a little bit like he's tearing the fabric of uh, the reality a little bit. Can I tell you, this looks like afterwards. What do you mean? After all the shit? When we see reality tear, the the sky is... Oh, uh, that's a huge spoiler. Not, is it? Like, we, see, we, see, we see nighttime when all the other scenes, there's, there's the Statue of Liberty with Captain America's shield. It's nighttime. The fabric of reality is breaking. And this is clearly the morning. So this is the day oh, after, yeah. I think, when he reset stuff. Yeah. Could be. Wow. He's, he's sealing so it hot. away. Look at his clothes. <laughs> he's so hot. You can barely see him. Yeah, what? It's just it might as well he's be so a fucking hot. outline. Can I tell you, I wish that's someone a sexy would say, oh, outline. I wish someone would, would barely see me and be like, he's so hot. <laughs> I need that. I want that so badly in my life. Just his someone to cloak, like, his tunic, his boots, his hair. I think the we just need to start dressing poise. like Doctor Strange, Jesse, and everything JP, that we do. I need to like have a costume. <laughs> <laughs> just walk around with costume, go. Be good. And also make sure that people only see you from like 30 feet out and that there's a huge sun behind you. The sun's always at your back, no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. I already got the bad lighting thing down, so it's only a matter of time True. before I really I look like a <laughs> villain. Yeah. You're just sipping tea. You're about to record your manifesto. Hello, Mr. Bond. Yeah. <laughs> you could be a you could be a Bond villain. Uh <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have any theories on uh on what old Doc Strange could be doing there? I really don't I I don't He's sealing it up. It's the it's the end of the movie, I'm telling you. You think that's the end? What? The the end of the that's well, that's the the next that's post battle. The sun has risen. A new day has dawned on the Marvel Maybe. Cinematic Universe. Maybe. Watch me be right. Could be the case. Could be the case. I don't know. This is one of those movies where I really don't, I don't have a clue what's going to happen. I know that we're going to go to X, Y, and Z plot point, but I don't know what happens <laughs> in between X, Y, and Z. Uh, and I have no idea where we end up. I don't know what the closing moments of this uh, film 
uh, are, and I I don't know what, uh, like, I think we're going to have a big fight, but I don't think it's going to solve everything. And I think it's going to be the type of film that, like, sets up the next Doctor Strange film, right? You don't, you yes. don't, oh, 100%. Yeah. You, yes. you don't call a movie the Multiverse of Madness and then, like, stop the multiverse in two films prior, <laughs> right? Uh, do you think there's any, uh, you think we get any reference or any mention of Kang at all in this? You think his? You think we see like a silhouette or a voice or anything, post credit, et cetera? That's too much. You think it's, it's too, too much? much? Yeah. Bronze, you got an over under. You got a prediction? Do we I see King? We don't have a precedent on whether or not they reference the shows in the movies yet, right? They haven't. Um, yeah. Yeah, they haven't. They've reversed so, it. They reference the movies all the time in the shows, but not vice versa. Yes. Yes. That's true. So I think until I see them do that for the first time, I'm going to like, I'm sure Kang will eventually pop up, but I feel like they're going to do the thing where they explain it in the film uh, because I don't think they're going to assume that everyone's seen the Disney plus shows. I think they're going to do the thing where it's like, this is Kang and they're going to do a whole thing explaining yeah. that. But Could be for I don't uh, think... Ant-Man, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm sure they'll recap some of that stuff or even reference like what happened in Loki, but I can't see them just like dropping him in. Um, I think he's going to come later. I think he's more like big bad of this arc. Mm. I don't know if I'm off base with that, but I truly think he's going to be the big bad. I think so no, as well. You're absolutely right. The thing that they're going to do is the thing expanded universes do all the time, which is like, re like we're going to get a movie where Kang is the villain and he'll be introduced as Kang. And then everyone who saw Loki will be like, Ooh! and that's mm -hmm. it. It won't yeah. be like, this was also the guy from Loki. They won't even mention it. We'll just know. Yes. Because we it'll watched be the like other show. It'll be like extra, like when you play, like, you know how they always say, oh, you could play this video game without playing the first two. But then if you play the first two, you get references that yeah. people don't get. I think it'll be like that. He might even yeah. make a little in-joke to Loki that the, uh, some people don't get. But I do think they're going to introduce him as a fully like introduced character, if that makes sense. I have a feeling the, 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 the logic I'm following here is that of Thanos, where we saw that dude at the end of the first Avengers film. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. And then we just didn't All see right, him. I'll do it for, myself. Like, Right. We just did not see him. And there was like very little to know. There was like, I think, murmurings or references, but we did not see him again or ha hear him truly referenced again until Guardians of the Galaxy. When I think uh, Ronan, is that his name? Is it Ronan? Ronan. Yeah, that's Ronan. Ronan the uh, destroyer? Ronan the okay. accuser? Accuser. Because <clears throat> accuser, accuser is a yeah. uh, title. Yeah. I got I get because of Hawkeye, I was like, were they both named Ronan? So um yeah, Ronan references him and then Nebula references him and Gamora references him. But that was the second time we heard about him. Still didn't I don't think we saw him in that film either. And Guardians? Oh, we totally did. Ronan goes to visit him. Yeah. Oh, and he gets chewed one out. Of his, his boys. Yeah. He's on a throne. He gets he gets yelled at. Doesn't he? Yeah. 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 And yeah, yeah. so that's what inspires him to be like, I got to do this. I got to kill him. Otherwise, Thanos is probably going to. I don't know what Thanos is going to do. His whole plan is he's going to take the stone and kill Thanos. He's like, I don't even need you, Thanos. Thanos like, oh, I'll kill you, boy. And he's like, no way, bro. Yeah. And yeah. Then, right. you know, he loses to a dance. Right. Yeah. That, that was on TBS yeah. last night for Jesse in the theater in the hotel. He, he watched it recently. It's. Memories, yeah, I was gonna say you remember a lot. <laughs> I do. I enjoy watching. I Guardians is a great rewatch of all the Marvel I think that's movies. That's why we ranked it so high. So many it's people great were yeah. on why we ranked it so high, but I think for a lot of us, some of the criteria was like, I watch this one all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we didn't see him again until Endgame, or sorry, the first one. Uh, Infinity, Infinity War. War. Yeah. We, we didn't see him until then, so. When you look at the first appearance and the last one, there's quite a several year spread between them. That is true. So I, I do think that they're going to take their sweet 
friggin' time building up Kang to be uh, an equivalent threat threat to Thanos because Thanos snapped away half of the Avengers and beat them. He technically won in that first movie uh, and almost won in the second one, too. Yeah. So I think, like, so many people, so many, their question is, like, especially people that don't read comics, their question is, like, how are you going to put up a villain that's going to stand up to Kang? Like, who's going to do that? Is it Galactus? I'm like, I don't think we're going to get Galactus this arc. I, I do think it's going to be Kang, and I think they're going to take their dear sweet time peppering him in every movie. Because the cool thing about Kang is he overlaps with a lot of the heroes we have right now. Because, like, we don't have um, Tony Stark. You know, I think we'll have Ironheart by the time they make their bit, next big Avengers crossover event. But, like, it he he meshes better with the heroes that are in rotation and are headliners now than what were headliners in the first arc. Because even though Scarlet Witch was there, she was not like a part of the main lineup. As, I'm sorry if that sounds rude, but like you had like the front liners and you had the back liners. And for Thanos, those front liners made sense. And with the current roster we have, who I envision as being the front liners, Kang makes sense. Yeah, that's very true. It's very true. So that was a long answer. I apologize. No, it's it was no, well that's right. That's great. Cool. That's great. It's good stuff. Uh, someone also, uh, who was it? Let me, I want to give credit to them. Uh, WD40 in my chat says Eternals did make a call out to Falcon becoming the new cap during their dinner scene. So there was a slight reference uh, within that film to the. Uh, right, but Disney that happened in a movie. Oh, I guess that could be. Yeah, you're right. He did give him the shield. Although they wouldn't, would they know about that? Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a little ambiguous. Yeah. But yeah, you, you might, you, you could be right about that. It, it, it follows fact, the logic think... that everything in the movie stays in the movies. Yeah, and it does. all the TV stuff is like supplemental. Yeah. Yeah, because the more I think about it, it isn't until the show that he gives them the shield back. So if you've never seen the show. You definitely walk away with the assumption that this is Captain America now. Then if you watch the show, you realize like uh, he actually gives him the shield back and is like, no, thank you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, I wonder it, 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 uh, like how long like are they going to keep that up? Thing. Like how, how long do you think they're going to keep the two separate? Maybe forever. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's a comic thing. Like they can pull this off because it's like, uh, you know, a lot of the time when you read comics, there's, there's certain, issues and arcs that are like well i'm glad i read that it was unimportant to the overall continuity of the of this series or whatever but it added something to it and that i think is what the tv shows will do their bonus stuff yeah they, they add to what's going on i think that um the big the biggest like i was about to say what if but that's not the the biggest thing is the end of the Black Widow movie features the like the the scene where she's like, Hawkeye killed your like killed your sister. Like that line. That is important because that might be the first time we see some sort of thing happen because obviously she's in the show now. Yeah. And what does that mean? Because that's a movie thing, right? And so does that mean that it's going to wrap up in the show? I, I don't know that we're going to get resolution on that storyline in the show. And if we like do, it. that'll be the first time that we have a TV show resolve a thing versus a, a movie. And I guess we'll find out together, right? Yeah. Because that was from a movie. It's being resolved. It's being touched on right now. And so we'll see what happens in the future if that resolves itself. Or she's like, I'll deal with you later in the last episode. And then that transitions into a movie moment where they like fight or something. I have no clue. Yeah. What's the, uh, are, you guys are a hundred percent in on the other Spider-Man being in this, right? hundred percent. You think they have to be there or do you not don't put that on me? I don't know. I have no, I feel like we're, this could be the greatest letdown in the history of letdown. I'm, I'm bracing for it. <laughs> do you think that's I... why they delayed it? Cause they're like, guys, they think that they're in this movie. We got to get them in this movie. <laughs> I'm worried. <laughs> I I love. Okay, here this speaks to because I 100 believe they're in there. 
but the fact that Jesse is unsure, chat is unsure, and I think bronze is unsure just speaks volume to how good Marvel is at their job <laughs> of, of well, putting doubt or casting how doubt good on this. Marvel is at like a buildup that leads to a letdown. And there uh, are yes, many I was, examples. I was going to, I was going to say that I was going to say that I, here's, I have this, this prediction that I hope, is not true. Like, I really, truly hope it's not true. I'm wondering if they're going to be in there as, like, cameos. Oh, like a, another... Like, like a, what would be a cameo, though, that would be a letdown for you? Quicksilver? Oh, like where that they type just show up as, like, normal, everyday people? And they're not a Spider Man or something. Yeah, or they, or something happens to them, and they, uh, they, they get like you know that re- gets resolved before the end of the film. Uh, where it's like, oh yeah, this is just a quick nod, and they're we're never gonna see them again. Either they get killed, or they never existed, or they're just alternate versions of of Tom Holland Spider Man. They're not their respective characters from their respective universes. Like these are all potential sidelines that I think for me personally would be a huge letdown if it's like, Oh, well this is just, you know, d- does that make sense? Yeah. I don't know. Cause they do shit like that where it's like, Oh yeah, you're going to see this character. And then it's just, d- okay, to, here's to another be one. Fair, though, that- Quicksilver and other Spider-Man are apples to oranges <laughs> in terms of relevance. Yes. Like Quicksilver is a little bit I- of a deep cut. Whereas the other Spider-Man are like, Oh yeah, they're the other Spider Man, right? Yeah, yeah, I would agree. But I think like when he first appeared, people were clearly very excited because they liked that iteration of the character. They liked that take on the character. Sure. And Marvel, I feel like, was just cowardly about it, where they had to write in this little like um, joke that they can retcon at any time. I'm not saying that he's not Quicksilver. It was just very clear they were afraid to commit to him being Quicksilver and to commit to him like being, you know, this like alternate version that could potentially cross over into this version. It almost seemed like a screen test. And I feel like that's kind of some of my annoyance with Marvel is they always keep a door open. Yeah. Like, well, let's, let's just keep this open in case we want to go back. Like, j- j- let's just make sure that we've got a way to write this out. Some of that trepidation I understand, but. One of my favorite things about Loki is that they did not do that. At no point were they like, or, you know, maybe they were just like, no, there are alternate realities, alternate timelines. This is a thing. Kang is a thing. This is where we're going. It wasn't like they were bouncing around the idea and 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 doing everything they could avoid or the, every, doing everything they could do to avoid saying the word multiverse. Like, they didn't do that. But it seems like in the past they've, they just, I don't know, even with Captain Marvel, they kept hyping up like, oh, yeah, Captain Marvel's going to be this big thing. She's going to be, that character was in Endgame for 30 seconds. Am I misremembering <laughs> yeah. that? She was like, in the beginning and then the end, yeah. yeah. 30 friggin' <clears throat> seconds. And I was like, y'all made an entire movie to hype up this character and then just did not utilize them at all like i don't know what happened there well i, I just, mean she killed the giant ship right like that's that's a significant action but in terms of a role in the movie it was very small you're, you're correct it was very small yeah and i think my personal theory is is that there, there was so much backlash against brie larson and the captain marvel character potentially being the strongest avenger because that was the discourse on twitter at the time yeah it could have been that they just i feel like they they turned back and i think that media suffers when you listen to the naysayers too much i think sometimes you just got to commit to it rise Jesse, of <laughs> skywalker <laughs> so you see it right because poe dameron's writing in in everything other than the first film i could talk about this all day them retconning half the shit they wrote i was like y'all need to Pick a lane and stay in it because I would have they more respect for that. Killed Star Wars for me. I am the <laughs> biggest Star Wars. I agree. Nerd, and they straight up butchered it to the point where I I have not watched a Star Wars movie in 
whenever the Rise of Skywalker came out. That was the last time I was like. <sighs> I hated it. I'm not going to lie. Over. Like I, people, I, I, I hesitate to say it because like if you, I'm sure you've dealt with this even more than I have, Jesse. Like if you say you hate Rise of Skywalker, people say that you're a misogynist. Or that no, like oh they, clearly uh, they uh, no we, everyone agrees Rise of Skywalker is garbage. <laughs> oh, that's Last not Jedi that's not what I got. Is different. Last you... Jedi's different. Last Jedi's like yeah, that's true. It's, it, that one like I actually I don't think it's a great movie, but I I think it's fun and I like it. And I have a lot of friends who do not, and so we fight all the time over it, and that's fine. Like I'm fine with arguing over I, whether. I just like know. TLJ too. I just liked both of them. I yeah. yeah. But anyways, that's a conversation but, for another day. But Rise of Skywalker, I think everyone universally agree because Rise of Skywalker is exactly what we're talking about, Bronze. They were like, okay, how do we please the fans who like The Last Jedi? <laughs> and how do we hmm. please everyone who hated The Last Jedi? And they made something that pleased nobody. Nobody. Yeah. Garbage film. Yeah. Tr- like just and, truly and awful. Sometimes you just like you have to just accept that you're not going to get that audience and just make the movie you want to make. And I think a great example of that, even though it's an old example, but one of my favorite movies like Alien and Aliens, they're very different. They're not at all alike. They're not even in the same genre. And yet both of them are very well loved. Now, there's some people that are going to tell you that Alien is better. There are some people that are going to tell you Aliens is better. But I think what I respect about both of those films, even though they're both very different takes on the same genre, or not on the same genre, but on the same source material, is that neither of them strayed (coughs) from that vision of what they were trying to go for. Both of them are very unapologetically in their lane. And I would even say that about games, too. Games like Doom 3. It's kind of the black sheep of the doom family. Maybe I'm alone in that. I, I kind of liked it. It was like kind of a horror game. It was very different. It was very different. I love doom eternal. This is a free and amazing game, but I, I did like that, that that game was so different. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. I, I, so JP, if I had to like give you my, this is what I'm worried about speech. Here it is. Get okay. ready. All right. Here it is. So Jesse Cox, this is what I'm worried about speech. All right. My hope is that we're going to get multi Spider-Man. Can't wait for that. That'd be hype as hell. But my fear is that we have been getting hints that Doc Ock is like, he has like some alternative. Like if you remember in Sam Raimi's spider verse, Doc Ock like had it bad. Yeah. Like he like accidentally kills his wife yeah. and he like, like he, he's not like, he's a villain that you can kind of like feel bad for. And so he is given a second chance in this reality. And I'm curious if he's going to attempt to be like a good guy. Uh, and what I think is because there's a scene in one of the trailers where straight up they're helping him. Electro is blasting Doc Ock out a window. Oh, oh, yeah, they're fighting, yeah. They're they're clearly fighting. And I wonder if that scene at the end that has Electro and Lizard and Sandman versus Spider-Man, if the people with him are not the other Peter Parkers, but Green Goblin and uh, Doc Ock, and that's what they cut out because they don't want people to know that's the twist. The villains have joined with uh, Spider-Man. Would it be possible for them to have other doc ox no no i'm I, like i genuinely think <laughs> is that that is, at the end is that doc too far fetched because <laughs> straight up a uh, uh, green goblin loses his mask which the mask in the raimi verse was the thing that was like a hard as born yeah right yeah, like, like the mask yeah. was the green goblin when he put it on it became the monster right and yeah. so now that he's lost the mask in this film at least that's what it looks like what if he's, what if he, the guys from the Raimi verse are like, you know what? We had a, we had a raw deal and we just want to live. Oh, maybe that's the plot twist. It's because they want to live. And Dr. They Strange die. is trying to, oh, oh. Because Dr. Strange is trying to get, he's like, look, they have to die. That's their fate. 
And they're like, we want to live. And they've convinced our Peter Parker, MCU Peter Parker, to save them, that they're on his side. And then they're fine. Like, what if that's it, dude? What if at the end, it's not Spider-Man, it's them. That's what I'm worried about. That, that so, scene where it's edited out and Lizard gets like hit in the face by something that we don't see on screen in that trailer. If that's like a, like a tentacle that hits him. Put it out there. I hope that's not it, but put it out there. Yeah, it could be. I don't know. Now, now you've got me questioning if they're going to be in this movie. I, why I was, won't the, I came why wouldn't this. those two guys be in that scene? I'm just like, ask, like that's a final battle montage Maybe. of him going up against three guys. Why isn't it Doc Ock, Electro, and Green Goblin? Yeah. Why is it Sandman, Lizard, Electro? Just asking questions. Could be. Here's the other thing that I have a question of. If those Spider-Men are in this film uh, post this weekend, probably post Thursday or Friday, there's no way they're going to be able to keep that a secret. So do they bring no. that into the marketing? For this movie? Yes, 100%. Yes. They just put the other Spider-Man in like a, a trailer and, and put that out on TV and on the internet. Every 30 second commercial will be like the film event of the year. And it'll show <laughs> all three and it'll be like, uh, it'll be them on like a flagpole with the American flag in the background. You know, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> the the return to movie theaters. Man. See it so I, like in, on the big screen. Yeah. I, I was watching, uh, it's, it's, I still haven't watched any of the, um, toby mcguire spider-man recently but uh last night tbs knows what they're doing with their programming and they had the amazing spider-man one on uh with andrew garfield that movie is not good i th nope. th that came out it i don't i didn't go and check to double uh to verify this but the way that that movie is shot feels like it was sony trying to sell 3d tvs because yes, sir. that entire film has like this weird first person Spider-Man shit where it you see like his hands and legs and he's like flying through the the through New York like shooting and it's I was very we it was weird. That was a very it weird movie to watch. It is very obvious, much like the Fantastic Four film. That, that came on right exist. after, which was hilarious. I turned it off they immediately. Exist? <laughs> simply to keep the ip yeah they are not well done like i love every actor who's god bless him for trying like seriously I, andrew garfield he was fine when you know he what? just was being peter parker he was yeah. fine yeah but it's very obvious that they were like look just make a thing it doesn't even have to be good it's <laughs> not <sighs> amazing spider-man 2 the villain's whole thing is like you did it come to my birthday party but yeah they tried to make your, they tried the to villain make, origin <laughs> the, shit out correct of me if terrible. i'm wrong but like don't they try to make uh jamie fox a nerd in that film that's and it, what and it he's, just like he's spider-man super fan yeah he is spider-man super fan and he's like you you didn't like me spider-man uh, and now i'm going to get my revenge he, they did that trope that i hate which is like the nerdy guy Gets a superpower and suddenly he's the coolest dude ever. He's like, I've learned my lesson, Spider Man. I have awesome powers now and I'm also cool. Like, all right, great. There's definitely Son. like a Princess Diaries Whoa. vibe to some movies, you know, where it's like, apparently I was this hideous creature and now I'm hot and cool and sexy. I've taken off my glasses. And it was that, really, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. terrible. It, he when Jesse uh, takes off his glasses, he turns into Jeff Goldblum. Like every when time I take off my glasses, like, I become a mole man. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> welcome to you're my really... mole city. <laughs> yeah, you're not selling. You're not oh, selling it. God. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, you no, can't I make... couldn't do that. I couldn't get superpowers then. Be like, hey, you can't guys, make Jamie my Fox glasses, into be like, a, a nerd. Mole man? He's too. He's too Jamie Fox. He just can't yeah, do he it. Just, he literally turns he just from a nerd like a into Jamie Foxx. He looks like a cosplaying nerd. <laughs> or he looks like he's cosplaying as a nerd. Uh, it's just, it doesn't work. There's no glow up. There's not, you can't do what you did with, uh, what's it called? With Captain America and the first Captain America film. Yes. Yeah. 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 It, it, so. And that, it was very obvious with that, that they like, you know, shout out to his body double. That guy, that guy put in a ton of work. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, well, we'll find out if uh, if the Spider Mans are in the Spider Man. Weird I'm shit. Telling you, I'm worried. I'm worried that like I'm fine if the story is like Doc Ock is trying to get a redemption arc, but like secretly, you know, it's a Doc Ock thing. He's not a good guy. But well, he always has <sighs> ulterior motives. Yeah, but it definitely seems to me like the setup for the story. I I don't know. Maybe their plan is is the reason why there's a tear in the multiverse is cause Doc Ock causes some stuff. Like I don't know. But um Well we all we'll see. Uh, we also have the whole uh story that like everyone knows who Spider Man is. Uh at least for, you know, twenty or thirty minutes in that movie before he goes to Doctor Strange, right? So we gotta deal with they, they gotta they gotta feature that some way. Also, Charlie Cox is in this film. I don't know if he shows up as Daredevil. Uh, I don't think he'll put on the or don the Daredevil suit. I think he's just gonna be like, "Oh yeah, I'm Charlie Cox." Uh, I and I heard some. I know a man's about to walk through a door. Oh, how'd you know that, Charlie Cox? Oh, you know, I've got secrets too. Blah blah blah. <laughs> Why would he it. say that? Why would he be like, "I've got secrets well, they, too"? They're That's gonna make terrible some sort of allusion to it. <laughs> they're gonna make some sort of reference to it, but he's not gonna I've be got in the suit. Too, Peter Parker. Yeah, sucks. That sucks. Look, that's why I'm not a writer for Marvel. All right, Jesse, you outed me. You outed me. You got me out. Um, but yeah, we know he's in the film. But he's I let here maybe that's the the next one. Does Daredevil put on a suit in this movie? Or is that one step too far? Are you guys still in camp? He's not even in this movie. I'm not going to say he's not in the movie. Okay. I think they're going to I think it's going to be a test. I think I think Disney is very careful about trying to figure out what's working, what's not working, what's jiving with their audience. I think he might come into um oh god, sorry. Uh go. I think he might come in to like legally consult on something or help uh Tom Holland with something yeah. in a lawyer capacity. I think we will see Matt Murdock. I think we're not going to know if he's already been operating as the daredevil or if he's doing so even at that time i think they're gonna see the reaction on twitter see if people are like more daredevil more matthew murdoch and then they're gonna bring him in yeah i can i, can I, I also ask have you a both a question that, hmm. no do do you think <laughs> do you think that this matthew murdoch this kingpin are the Netflix ones or no. just identical it, copies being no. rewritten. That that's the, that's the part I was going to say is I do not for a second think that they are going to scoop them up from the Netflix show and have oh. a situation where they've already Matthew Murdoch has already fought and beaten Kingpin twice. I do not think they're going to enter. There's not going to be Kingpin's entrance into the MCU as someone who's already been beaten twice. I think he's going to come into the MCU as a new threat because if you come in with the Netflix canon in place, as 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 amazing as D'Onofrio is, as amazing as that show is, I'm a huge fan. We have seen him get beaten twice, so it's not going to feel as great to see him go up against you know Peter Parker. Like I think we're going to see like season one Kingpin and. Then we can operate from a level where you can bring back bullseye or change bullseye or tool in a bullseye that works. And same thing with uh, Katana. That's your name, right? That would be no, lovely. it's not. Katana. I'm like second That's, guessing. Katana's not a Katana. Mortal Kombat character. You're talking about Electra. Like Katana. Uh, I was th- yeah, I was thinking DC <laughs> Birds of Prey, the girl with the sword with her dead husband in it. That Katana. Yeah, no, uh, Electra. Oh, yeah, they're oh, gonna. Okay. No, I, 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 think I prefer could Katana. Potentially yeah, bring I, I like Electra. Katana and Melina. I prefer up Katana. From, uh... Melina and Katana both in it. Yeah. 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 And then we bridge the yeah the Mortal Kombat verse, I, I, where the actual surprise final movie of this arc of the MCU is a Mortal Kombat yeah. tournament. And then That'd instead of uh, then Ed Boon just starts showing up in every film as an old guy for some reason. <laughs> yeah. He plays Raiden for some reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great. Fantastic. Well, I'm thinking now, and I'm like, we even got the story arc in the show. The show covered so much. We even got the story yeah, arc I mean, in the show where seasons. he's got 
Yeah. I forget what they call the the rope where he like starts to go like kind of yeah. almost like bad. He starts questioning and he's like got they got the Catholicism arc going and he has to hide out in the church. That stuff was fire, by the way. That was so good. I loved all of it. I loved all of it. But I I don't think they're gonna canonize it because then it also canonizes Punisher. It it removes characters from the universe. They, can they pick might and choose, want though. some of them are dead. I don't. I I think if they if they they can just pick and choose whichever they want to bring in from the Netflix stuff. If they bring in Daredevil, it doesn't automatically canonize everything else around it. They can just be like, oh yeah, uh, that hasn't happened yet in the MCU, but this has. Well, <laughs> I I guess that's kind of what I'm saying is I think they're gonna have those people playing those characters, but. I think they're going to lean away from be- telling us where in the arc he is. Yeah. So yeah. that they can then decide. And I don't think we're going to have a kingpin who's been to jail twice. I don't, yeah, I don't yeah, know about well, that. Yeah, I mean, I at think this th- point, the world would know kingpin exists if he's been to jail twice. And, and this MCU... He's it ran for like office. No one... Yeah. He yeah. almost won, didn't he? He did, yeah. yeah. There's a... Uh, I'm, I'm very curious about the disney version of punisher and more importantly going to disney theme parks and seeing punisher walk around like hey kids. oh jesus christ yeah that, would that love would... that oh my god <laughs> no, that would be what terrifying a dystopian horror trope that would be think... fucking terrifying what are you talking about i don't about? think they can make a punisher film i because <laughs> i realized that with um i think it's going to be a show because I, don't. I realized that with what's his face. I can't think of his name right now from um, Captain America and Winter Soldier. What's War Machine. Name? No, the oh. the guy that was a kind of an asshole who's now going to join the Dark Avengers. That Zemo. Team. Oh, no, oh, the, oh, the uh, U.S. agent. U.S. agent. Walker. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Walker. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah, Walker. I completely forgot U.S. agent. So that, when he's standing there with the shield and the gun, normally I watch some pretty edgy shit, okay? Like, for some reason, my brain decalibrates when it, like, comes to Disney stuff. Just seeing him with the shield and the gun made me uncomfortable. I don't know if it made it. I was like, fuck, they, he's walking around where with where he, like, decapitates a man? Yeah. With the shield? I audibly gasped. I was like, "They've this is a, a Disney production." I was like, oh. "I love that. That was great." Yeah, I don't. I don't. Think I liked we'll, it. I don't think we'll ever see Punisher on the big screen just because of like socially and and almost politically where the Punisher is at right now in in the real world. Uh, like what the oh. uh, it'll be a while, I think, before that starts to. Uh, diminish a little bit but i think we'll they would have to make a like and i think they would have to make a stand which yeah marvel's never gonna do that something that they're not gonna do yeah, <laughs> yeah. why yeah. would you I think it anger would be too any of violent. your audience yeah yeah i think it would be too violent because even though i loved all of those scenes because they were jarring i can't imagine what like little old mom and pop from the midwest feel about that because oh yeah that you know because you just thought you said they're the Punisher biggest who are you kidding? they're the biggest fans mom and pop from the midwest are like it's about time someone handled crime <laughs> Hell, you know they'd be in you kidding me yeah they kind of co-opted For violence? The Punisher. i guess maybe yeah i mean there's well, they co-opted the punisher symbol so they're... and in the comics they've taken a hard line against that right so like in the comics like the punisher actually uh, sides against people like that he actually there's a scene of him ripping a sticker a punisher sticker off a cop car and saying like i do this so that you fucking don't and if you ever fucking fly my colors or do this shit again i will fucking kill you like he is very clear about like no i am a piece of shit so your hands are clean if you are a piece of shit I will fucking come and kill you. Yeah, like he has yeah. such a, such a like hard line against it. I don't think they'll ever do that. Well, it depends the movies, on the success they would of piss so many people off. It depends on Deadpool, right? Deadpool's an R movie. They've said it's R. Yeah, but so Deadpool's it, like zany R, right? Like yeah, Pun- Punisher is like R spelled, uh, yeah. That is the gateway. Zany R is the gateway to hard R, 
And everyone knows yeah. the hard R is the gateway to NC-17. <laughs> it's about time those movies came back, and it was Disney. What do you All want? I'm saying you is want a fucking NC-17 Psylocke movie or something with like Marvel your comic film. book suit? <laughs> you know what I think the testing oh, ground is? My personal theory? <laughs> Moon Knight. That won't I be think our, that's though. where they're going to test it. Yeah. I know it's not going to be our, but I think they're going to test I would agree. how how much they're going to push it. And I think Blade is going to be Blade as well. Yeah. the other one. Because the thing is, Blade doesn't have to have blood because vampires turn to ash. So it doesn't have to be like, but we are going to see edgier. We're going to see more violence. We're probably going to see some decapitations. I think those two films, like the direction that they're going with it, I think they are testing. Um, and I always have people tell me like, oh, well, Blade isn't, is it going to be, I was like, but you can't deny that watching Mahershala Ali decapitate people with a friggin' sword is, is still a direction we haven't exactly well, gone. Yeah. E- even, even just the idea of using a sword in combat, like unless the sword like fucking auto cauterizes the fucking slashes and wounds, there's going to be blood all over that film there's no way there's not going to be blood it's like the first weapon in the mcu that has done such a thing i guess sword or i guess the thor used well thor has a hammer that's more of a blunt instrument yeah they're pretty blood adverse it's it's disney's always weird about that where they like they'll show extreme violence but it will be like bloodless and and they also the difference, Bronze, I think, is when it comes to Blade, Disney has, like, a funny thing where it's, like, robots, zombies, vampires, non-human things, it's okay to murder the hell out of them because they're not human. But if it was a human, no blood. But if it's a vampire, you stab them, they go, like, Aye! they disappear. True. So it's That's fine. True. It's totally fine. Yeah. That'll be hyper-violent. Yeah. And they'll be all right with it because it's not... I just Real ran people. with the assumption that they're going to use the tricks TV has used to get to get around it, which is like just dusting the vampires versus having them like melt or something. I mean, I hope they go all the way with it. I am a I am a super fan of the first Blade well, movie. My dad let me watch it when I was probably too young to watch it. I had the biggest crush on Deacon Frost. I thought that dude was the coolest dude in the world. And watching like freaking Hold Blade on. walk in there and chop some dude's Deacon hand Frost off, sucks. and then and then nailing him to the to the wall with those two stakes, yeah. And then like I was like, and then the- that sexy rave. That's how I discovered my sexuality. I was like, what is happening? Are those two girls making out? What is happening in this club right now? What is what is this? Is this goth culture? Am I an <laughs> eight year old goth kid? What is I this? To, I need I was, you to know. Whoa. I need you to know that you're remembering all the parts of the movie that are like awesome and not the part of the movie where Deacon Frost is like, they're bad. Blade, yeah. I'm going to tie you to this thing and drain your blood while your mom seduces you. Yeah. Like that movie's crazy. It I watched that it. About no, it a is month crazy. Ago. Hold on. He, that he holds also a child. Stupid. It's very stupid, but it's great. He there, holds a child the beach scene? on a street. Yes. The and beach scene's real stupid. That. Cause they're just like hanging out and the guys like starting to melt away and they're still just hanging out. No problem. Hanging out in the sun, not melting it. But the guys like fucking melting real bad. They're having a terrible time. They have that. They have the, yeah. They have that thing. And that's why blades like your mascara is red. And he goes, he gets all yeah. mad, all, all edgy. Oh, he throws I'm that actually kid into more traffic. upset now that they have like that weird mascara bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. They, they wear, yeah, they, they wear have, like, it's babies. so dumb. It's so dumb, but man, I love man that movie goal so much. That movie has become a blood tornado. His his yes. vision board yes. has become a blood tornado. <laughs> movie's crazy. The movie's crazy. <laughs> anyway, so good. I, I know it's like campy and dumb, and it's so nineties, but I love it so much, and I don't know why. Yeah, I just love it. Anyways, that couldn't be made today, uh, with the with where CG's at. That movie only works because the CG is so bad <laughs> that it just looks stupid. He cuts his hand the off at the end and it like, comes back together. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hilarious. God. It looks like fucking Flubber or some shit. <laughs> 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 it looks terrible. Yes, yes. It looks real bad. 
Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Anyways, I don't even know what the fuck we were. Oh, oh, we were talking about Daredevil. Uh, I, you guys didn't give me direct answers. Does he put his, his costume on? No. Mm-mm. Do we see him as a lawyer? Yes. Yes. Who who knows him as a lawyer? Happy. Everyone, because he's Peter Parker's lawyer. He's his uh, mm-hmm. assigned no, 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 legal but, counsel. Oh, you think he just gets assigned randomly? You don't think like Happy knows who he is or something like that? No. I think it's a case of like, oh, this this press release was done, essentially exposing you as Spider Man, and here's your lawyer to help you navigate this, and Stark Industries is paying for it. You know, like I think it's one of those Mm. cases. I think it's probably going to be like Matt takes the case because he understands what having a secret identity is like. I think, I think it's either that it's either Murdoch seeking him out or Happy knows who he is maybe because of like the sokovia accords or some shit like that uh like they have a database of people or something i don't know um and that's why he gets assigned daredevil and there's going to be some instance of like daredevil catching something or some random bullshit and it's going to like elude i think there's going to have to be some illusion i think it's going to be like that's matt murdoch he's going to introduce himself as matt murdoch and if you know who that is awesome disney's not going to say anything else I'm convinced of this. Uh, I think there will be at least it's not gonna one. Not going to be like, oh, I heard something. It must be. It's not going to. He's not going to do that. Well, <laughs> they can always retcon it because I oh, think yeah. it's but heavily they don't have implied to. that like uh, Tony Stark has been keeping an eye on potentials. I mean, that's how he found Peter. He's been keeping an eye on yeah. people that he thinks, and I think that's going to lead into Ironheart too. I think it's going to be like I've been keeping an eye on this kid. And in the comics, I believe she's a recipient of even like some Stark scholarships. So like it's not like implausible that he hasn't been keeping an eye on Matthew Murdoch. And maybe like he has it like in in paperwork somewhere like, oh, if you ever need legal legal counsel, like call these people, maybe happy puts them in touch. So it could be that like nobody else really knows. But they and then they find out later they could always at any point retcon it and be like, oh, well, Tony knew he was daredevil this whole time. Could or they can go the other way and be like, he's through representing peter parker he decides to become daredevil and take that leap it could go either way but they could keep that door open and always be like oh yeah tony knew because we we kind of have it on pretty good authority he was he's looking he's scouting i think he was probably one of the few people that was because he was didn't wasn't he also keeping an eye on ant-man uh somewhat he he knew that ant-man existed but it wasn't necessarily paul rudd ant-man is that was, true? He well, no. He he. Shield knew who Ant Man was as Michael Douglas. Is that true? Yeah. Well, go watch the film. It's they're hanging out. I thought the reason they knew he exists is because he tried to infiltrate the compound. Uh, well, that maybe he went to the compound. Falcon sees him, and then that's why he's on the radar. I mean, they're like they, we're looking for a guy who's tiny. Shield definitely knew who Hank Pym was. Now, whether they shared that yeah, information, yeah, I don't know. True. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's true or not. All right. I guess it's, it's plausible. You got me. Yeah. Uh, I, two things from chat that I hope I uh, hope happen. Uh, one of them is that uh, the reason that Matt Murdock uh, decides to help out Peter Parker is because Aunt May knows Matt. I hope that's the case. That'd be a great way. <laughs> to... Oh, they're dating? <laughs> yeah, they're dating or some shit like that would be. I okay. thought she was dating Happy. You're right, right, 100%. Let that, my again, big, let my big maybe, boy have some maybe love. Maybe he's Come an on. ex. Yeah. Maybe he's an ex. He could be an ex or something. I think let that'd be great. Yeah, he love. could be an ex. Come on, don't be, be like that. You know, ex. like, oh, my, my, you know, nephew needs uh, legal counsel. One of my exes was a lawyer. Yeah, I would like, know. I think that'd be hilarious. Uh, and the other one, uh, Zelsa says, I can't, uh, I could see it being something as small as Matt's cane being knocked over and he snaps it up with like unbelievable ease and speed or, or something small like that, where he's not necessarily, it, 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 there's a, there's a giant obvious reason of him actually still being blind, but also having some other, something else going on. I would love to see that. I think they're going to show us that he's speed. a walking, talking lie detector. I think that's how it's, I think like Tom Holland's character is not going to understand why, but I think because he can do that. Yeah, I think he he's going to be yeah, like, he walks around hey, to the courtroom and listens. Yeah. yeah. Peter, 
you can tell me the truth. And I think he's going to be like, we're going to get the sense of like, what? Like, is he, you know, I think they're going to do that. I think they're not going to assume that the audience knows. I think they're going to show him like, well, would, like, uh, just... would Peter's spidey sense go off at all? If like he detects daredevil. Well, it's not a threat. Think... Yeah. It's right. Not a threat, like he's not throwing so... something at him. He's just like, yeah, but it's different. It's something different from the norm. And I think that would trigger it. Right. Yeah. I don't know. That's that's what I'm trying. That's kind to... of what I like about the Spidey sense from Into the Spider Verse. It's not always for threats. It's more like, whoa! It's like a vibe almost. Like yeah, I like that. Check. Like this. Yeah. Yeah, I like that the Spider Verse, like Spidey sense, is like a vibe check of like, oh, you and I are the same. It's a little different um, in the MCU. If, yeah. Yeah, the Peter Tingle, I feel like, is more of like a get yourself out of danger tingle, right? Or like something's wrong tingle. I don't know if yeah. that would go off for, yeah, because he's not technically in danger. Like he's just getting lie detected. Yeah, he's just got like a little Peter tingle, you know. <laughs> Stop saying that. Uh, well, we'll find out, and we'll talk about it next uh, Monday. We also have to rank it. We got to rank that son of a bitch. Uh, that's a thing we do now after all those films. I hope it's good. I don't know when reviews hit. I wonder if that's actually been when do Spider-Man reviews? If the premiere is tonight, probably tomorrow. I mean, we're right? gonna get stuff tomorrow. Well, we're definitely gonna get uh, tweets tonight from yeah. everyone that would goes and sees it. Um, I'm oh boy, I I'm not even gonna look. I don't want to see the tweet that's like, you know what? I liked it, but it may not be for everyone. I don't want that. I don't want to even have the opportunity of seeing something like that. So it says, uh, according to the managing editor at Cinema Blend, Sean O'Connell, the review embargo for Spider-Man No Way Home will be lifting at 10.30 p.m. PST on Monday, December 13th. Well, that's today, it is. Yeah, this embargo well, should line up perfectly guy. with the end of the film's world premiere. That sounds right. Yeah, so that's tonight. At, that's uh, 1.30 Eastern, 1.30 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday. Uh, December yep. 14th. Time to, time to mute everything Spider-Man related. Yeah. So uh, I'll uh yeah. I'll take a peek. I, I can't uh, I can't resist. I'll I'll see what uh <laughs> see what happens. See how that goes. It'll be interesting. I wasn't that you hyped for the movie, uh, but then doing this show, I I guess I'm I guess I am hyped. I mean, it's a Spider-Man film, potentially a big one. But probably the biggest uh, not probably definitively the biggest film of uh phase four and definitively the biggest film since Endgame, without a doubt so oh we'll oh yeah 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 we'll see how that goes um do you think there's any reference to the giant man appearing outside of earth <laughs> do you think, like how long do we go how many movies jesse because i know this bothers the shit out of you too how many movies until we get a reference to a giant man appearing in space outside of Earth. I I can't fathom that that's not already happening in ha in Hawkeye. Like, everyone's like, yeah. I loved Rogers the Musical. I'm like, a literal space <laughs> man yeah, appeared dude. in the heavens. And a man came out of the Earth. The Earth is an egg for a man and no one is even like i think you know what i'm gonna question my reality everyone's like i hear those sleigh bells okay. jingle, 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 jingle. get out of town okay hold up jesse <laughs> that would be the this... news of the world jesse 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 <laughs> This is a becoming this is becoming a time speeds up scenario with you. You know that, right? Like every I'm not, not going to stop harping on it until it's answered, Bronze. I'm not stopping. I'm the same way, man. I demand answers. It hits my brain every time I start something MCU uh related that comes out after Eternals. It it really does. Look, I will are take the make me crazy. before Eternals. I Half of the globe got snapped away. At this point, you just have to assume these people are so traumatized. Right. This is just part of their right. reality. And that would trigger the fuck would, out of their PTSD. See the yeah, giant this space would like, man. It would be like you almost died again. I can accept <laughs> that 
that Hawkeye takes place before Eternals. I will accept that. Yeah, same. But at a certain point, something will have to take place after Eternals. Address the man in the ocean. They must have at least put like fake billboards in the background that are like, did you see God? <laughs> Call one eight seven seven to talk about the space man. Like <laughs> yes. literally anything, anything. Look, look. If you want to make some money, get a psychology degree in the MCU. Okay, all right. The People get a new therapist. <laughs> They're gonna need the them. The show opens with this little girl having her home and her father killed by aliens. And the way she rationalizes it is to idolize a hero she sees for 30 seconds and spend her entire life basically Batmaning, trying to be that hero. I don't think they've shied away from the trauma. I think Kate Bishop is on full display. That is not a healthy way to deal with your father's death. Oh, I'm not 100%. saying it's not an entertaining way. It's a very entertaining way to deal with it. But like, she is so mentally hurt by seeing this shit go down she sees one dude on a rooftop who's fighting them and she's like i'm gonna devote my life to being that like that so i think in some ways they do address it and i think like with eternals where they're gonna address it that's what i'm saying i'm just wondering how many films is it gonna be until it's addressed But like with shang chi and with other movies we've seen almost every single one there's a flyer somewhere like hey true post snap like dating yeah like need a blip support group like they're trying to say they're trying to be like listen we get it this is but to a certain point they also have to like keep it going because if everybody just gave up and was like i'm just gonna die now then that would (laughs) There's like a disconnect, though. One of the craziest things about comics in general, and it translates to the movies, is that 10 years ago at this point, actually more than 10 because we had a five-year time skip. We had a five-year skip, yeah. So, I don't know, let's say 15 years, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. The world discovered aliens exist. At that point, I'm curious why there's still, like, everything... Everything except for, like, the small circle of superheroes. Everything's roughly the same. And I would wonder, you know, why there aren't people who are like, we as a planet must unite. Like, I, like the Flag Smashers are like, F the government. But, like, where's the people who are like, we must unite against. Well, that's probably Armor Wars. Maybe. That sounds like a plot it just, for It's crazy Wars to, me to me that there isn't like a call for the world to stop fighting over dumb stuff and do instead oh, yeah. be like, bro, we are not alone. Yeah. And there I are people have that Star can Trek. vaporize us. Yeah, it's a Star Trek moment. Right, Jesse? Because I've I've seen first contact have a Star Trek yeah. type of situation. That's Apron all I'm me. saying. Yes, I you understood. are right. That is the um, reason why the Federation exists. On. You're onto something. Yes. It's something that's really interesting. So to, to give a little bit of comic book lore, okay, uh, they went a very different direction with Tony Stark in the MCU. I liked it, but in the com- I have to see how I emphasize that I liked the direction they went with Tony Stark in the MCU. But in the comics, he is that guy, Jesse. Like he's he he establishes sword. He's like it's not enough for us to be defensive anymore. Uh, he like he even goes on this crazy like a sort of antihero arc where he's like, uh we're not going to make it evolutionary wise. So I need to, we need to look at genetic modification. We need to look at, you know, like how can we get people to be, to be like physically uh, adept to deal with all these threats? How can technology keep us um, competitive against aliens, against gods, against even to a certain extent mutants? He kind of goes a little on the paranoid end, you know? Um, And this really plays up in a, in like any event where, any of the superheroes fight each other because he's over here. Like what if, what if captain America becomes a problem? What if the Hulk becomes a problem? I'm going to build the Hulk cluster. He's like this very paranoid, like person that's really concerned about how to push humanity forward. And how, how do we keep them current and balanced against all these new threats that have come in that can shape shift and stuff like that. But I feel like in the movies, he was, Towards the end, especially, he was so hopeful and like and, and like he has a kid. And and I feel like in the way he handled Tom Holland's character, like that version of Peter Parker, 
to me, it spoke of like him almost thinking of retiring and looking to the future. Does that make sense? Whereas I feel like the comic book version of him would have assessed that as a threat, not give him an, an iron suit at that point in time. Until he had established he was trustworthy, I don't think he would have designed him an iron suit. I think he would have been like, this is a problem. Same thing with Doctor Strange. I feel like he would have been like, until I know you, this is a problem. Because there's like all the scientists like Reed Richards and Hank McCoy and, and Tony Stark. And it kind of feels like them against the world where it's like, how do we keep us on top? How do we keep Earth on top? Sorry, I don't know if that makes sense. But I, I, I feel no, I, like... I, I'm, like... I'm with you on that. And I think that's kind of what they were trying to do with age of Ultron trying to show like he was thinking about the world. Like that was his plan and it didn't work out. Like I get it. Yeah. I just, there's a he lot went of things totally that different always, direction. It's just comic book logic, right? So it's yeah. always the same thing where it's like, in my mind, obviously there are always going to be people who are self-interested and only look out for themselves. Like that's just life. But yeah. if tomorrow half the population of the world vanished, and we all knew that a dude snapped them away and he had that kind of power. I feel like the remaining people, there would be depression and like people would be a mess, but many people would be like, all right, we as a society, as like a world must come together in order to like continue on. And it seems like everything gets kind of shut down for five years instead of like someone being like, look, that sucks. but." We need to, there's threats out there that we need to like, I don't know. I think it would have been wild if they came back, if everyone snapped back to like Earth, the militarized world. <laughs> like something crazy where they're like, we're ready. Like, you know, out of like Starship Troopers. I mean, that would be, that would be friggin' dope, Jesse. Yeah. yeah. But I'm also like, oh, <clears throat> you're so optimistic. Like, we saw a toilet with the graffiti that Thanos was right. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like you know, you know like, merch. I don't... Okay. Said that in the most recent yeah. episode, yeah. So, like, Wonder Woman uh, 84, whatever it's called, I freaking hated that movie, but that's a story for another time. The part <laughs> where I was, like, literally rolling on the floor laughing was when I was like, all of you, all of you have to give your wishes back. It's the only way. I was like... <laughs> Okay, right there, that would never happen. There would be yeah. people that are like, "Fuck you!" No, <laughs> yeah, I'm keeping no. this shit. I'm keeping it. Yeah. And the fact that she's like, "You have to," I implore you, you have to give your wishes back. And while she's on the floor, oh, you have to give your wishes back. I was like, "This is the stupidest film I've seen in my fucking <laughs> life." Holy shit, people liked this. You guys have did you hit your head? Uh, um, that movie was pretty well, bad. Ron, do you have to suspend disbelief because parts, we live in a yeah. world where a satellite can hack a computer, okay? That's where a satellite true. can broadcast an image to a computer screen. In that world, anything's possible. Yeah. Clearly. I, I do feel that at some point, uh, <clears throat> I think S.W.O.R.D. will probably, like, S.W.O.R.D. definitely exists at this point. I think we'll see that in um, Secret Wars. I think we'll start to see a little bit mm -hmm. of that. Uh, Come out well. Actually, we did see it in uh, in Wandavision. Wasn't Sword actually in Wandavision? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Sword was yeah. the yeah. agent. Yeah. So they'll probably flesh yeah. that out a little bit, and we will kind of see yeah. a global contingent uh, that exists. But, but I, I don't point, think Earth yeah. is going to unify, Jesse. I mean, I don't think Jesse, so as well. Think about it. They, we they didn't literally unify did with it COVID. a nature. <laughs> there, exactly. There was, and there was nature as healing posts, right? Like nature's healing. Humankind was the was the was the plague and we 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 joked about it we memed about it but they referenced that in endgame yeah and scarlett johansson literally says like look at these whales nature is healing and i my, i i was like i rewatched that movie after the pandemic and that shit made me laugh she literally <laughs> basically has a moment where she does her own version of nature is healing because there's whales like, like all over the place and yeah. then there's all these people that are like around like if you go back and watch those movies post pandemic it is very they read differently even with like the the flag smashers because they were filming that during the pandemic it's really funny because do you remember when they first started talking about covid everyone was calling it the boomer killer everyone's like oh houses will finally be cheap now i hope all these people die it was very unsympathetic very unsympathetic <laughs> vibes, right yeah, this bronze is uh part of a secret no uh, I evil society no, i guess i don't it's know. not my fault you old fogies are not on twitter and reddit man it was there people were like 
<clears throat> people were literally calling it Boomer Be Gone. There was like memes everywhere. Jeez. There's people in your chat talking about it, Jesse. People were calling it Boomer Be Gone. People were calling it like uh, the the Boomer Eraser, <laughs> Boomer Remover. Come on, chat, help me out here. Back me up. No, but I will. And I will everyone say, was saying, hmm. No, I, like you're absolutely right in that. It was, I'll never forget, I don't know, maybe like a month in, the very first month when everyone was like terrified at home, stocking up, not seeing. I remember. Remember seeing the giant in head LA, in the sky? The sky camera of LA for the first time. <laughs> yeah. The sky was blue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've lived in LA for 10 years and I've never seen the sky blue. And I was like, oh shit, we are ruining stuff. I was like. This is the example. We are destroying the world. I was like, oh, right. Oh, but yeah, there yeah, are yeah. people that feel that it's a good thing. And there there was posts everywhere. I'm for the record, I'm not endorsing those posts. I'm just saying I read yeah, a lot that was existed. like, what would be so bad if 30% of the population went away? So I do not think for a second people would, you know, I think the flag smashers was the most realistic thing. Because imagine you get a discount house in LA because the population has been freaking halved a place that you've never been able to afford a home and now you can afford one and then some asshole goes and snaps it back but you would but, you would join something like the flag smashers you would <laughs> but the difference here the big difference and the same thing with covid is many people don't believe covid cuz they cannot see it yes, just like I know. with the flag smashers like with anyone else a snap that occurs they're told a snap occurred no, like no one witnessed it except for a few people. So I can understand why there's, there's whatever. However, a spaceman <laughs> came through a black hole right above earth, reached down and grabbed people. <laughs> a man came out of the planet that looked like that dude. Uh, that's different. That's different. You get the uh, space man. That's different. That's a totally, it's totally different. People would lose their minds. If that happened, that would be a different world. That's it would fake be like video. Or you would, I was going to say, I was going to agree with JP. I was like, or you think it's just a drone show <laughs> similar. I hate, I hate all of you. You're totally right. Because they'd be like, Mysterio did it. Mysterio, How come did, we it. Did, it Mysterio, Mysterio did it. It's just drones, Jesse. It's just drones. You <laughs> idiot. He, what they did is they deployed a network of drones that had real. these right. screens on them and they showed the spaceman and you're believing them, you fucking sheeple. It's true. Wake you're right. up. You're right. You're right. I'm wrong. You're, you're absolutely right. This isn't even a joke. You are absolutely right. People would be like, this if Mysterio could do it and destroy buildings, it's obvious the government has set up spacemen why, why are those satellites up there? Well, the cameras also, broadcasting holographic spacemen to control us from the stars. Also, You're right. Hotelicus right. Coxicus believes everything the government tells him. What an idiot. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. I'm still with you, Jesse. I just want to know when the MCU addresses that because uh, it was a wild scene. It was a wild fucking scene. It's crazy absolutely crazy john snow just watching this shit and he's just like well i guess i'm gonna go talk to my sword <laughs> just, <laughs> how are they gonna bring that I like you there's... call them john snow jp that's yeah. so shady what why it's he's john snow i don't know what his fucking name is in this movie i forgot it's john snow you know i'm sure he's a great actor but he has he makes this expression he gets pouty like... bitch face yeah <laughs> That's what he gets. He gets Jon Snow. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. Face. Yeah. And every, I don't know if he knows it, but every time he does that, he's Jon Snow again. And I'm like, yeah. you need to not do that. And he's like, oh, you have to go on. You have to leave. You have to leave on. You're not going to, we're not going to go on a date. That, that's okay, I guess. And I'm yeah. just like, why is it that face? Like, I have to keep up my trend. Apparently, I, I forgot that I have a trend on the show where I just shit on, uh, the actor for John Snow. Kit Harrington. Yeah, Kit Harrington. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, I'm sure that. Kit Harrington's wonderful. He is my competition because he's dating that 
beautiful redhead from the show. Actually, I think they're married now. They are so married. So if like yeah. you know, if you were to go away, that'd be better for me. <laughs> like he seems lovely. Sure. Just a little pouty though. Just a little pouty. He probably makes that same face when like he doesn't get, you know, when DoorDash forgets his fries or some shit. Right? He just makes the, the fucking John Snow face. Well, I don't want to ask them to re-deliver the fries. <laughs> It's true. hundred percent. hundred percent. Without question. When the waitress asks him if he wants any condiments and he says ketchup and then she brings it and there's no ketchup, he would definitely make that face. Oh yeah. hundred percent. That's where he, uh, silverware. when the director says, John, we need you to give us that pouty bitch face. And he says, don't worry. I didn't have my ketchup last night at dinner. I've got this. <laughs> he channels the scene. No napkins. <laughs> exactly let's talk about hot guy episode four because that's the thing that came out uh hey the show continues to be good i i thought episode four was another winner uh i did not i i knew that uh let's say a black widow was going to show up i didn't know that it was going to be an episode four although i think maybe we even said that that was a leak a while back <clears throat> that she would be in uh this next episode but uh yeah i thought it was great I also, uh, I, I, there's a lot of moments, which I'm sure we'll get into. I think it's great that the LARPers are going to be the ones that make their new suits. I think that makes perfect sense uh, that, a, that a cosplayer, uh, in essence, will make a new, uh, I guess, a new Avenger and young Avenger or whatever you want to call Kate Bishop uh, in terms of her allegiance, et cetera. Um, I still think it's the biggest debate. I think the mom's the bad guy. Uh, I think the dad's oh, I've never been more sure of yeah, that. I'm yeah. convinced the mom is the villain. Yes. I think the, the dad is just like a, uh, a giant red herring. Uh, Captain McGuffin mm -hmm. is his superhero name. Uh, and he's generally a nice guy. Uh, I don't understand the deal with the references where he just like, can't make a, uh, or not a reference, but he can't like have a saying that makes sense. It's his endearing. It's the moment you realize he's not a villain. That's it's what it is. Because he has a goofy quirk that people are like, this guy, he's just a dad. That's absolutely what it is. Yeah. Absolutely. Maybe so. Maybe so. Uh, <clears throat> what else happened? Oh, and then I, I loved how Kate just uh, kind of does her own thing. She walked up <laughs> right into the apartment, had a great scene with the elevator. The guy was like, you're fucking crazy. Give me my groceries back and walked out. <laughs> I thought that was very good. Very Kate Bishop. Um, yeah. And I think it's I, I enjoyed uh, in general, uh, the episode number four. I'm worried though, because Bronze definitely has that face where she, I don't know if she did or not, and so okay. I'm trying to read into this. Did you not like it, Bronze? Bronze, did you not like episode four? Did you have episode? I issues? liked. I, I liked parts of it. Okay. Yeah, I liked parts of it a lot. Jesse's trying to adopt the John Snow face. There was other parts I just didn't really understand why it was there i guess uh like the drinking thing no no, no i thought that was cute okay uh, yeah so I, like, that was just references to the comics is all that was yeah yeah the beginning was uh man i just gotta say that family's fucking awkward i, I don't i don't care what anybody says That's i think my any opinion. family that has that much money is just awkward in general they're just, <laughs> they're just fucking awkward they're just fucking yeah. super awkward but, yeah uh uh, Kate said something that made me really <clears throat> wonder how much the sword guy is getting used. So we know that he's the CEO of a company that's laundering money. We uh -huh. know he was at a black market auction buying illegal stuff. So we know he's got his fingers in some illicit activities. Yeah, he's got some But there's, there's degrees to this, right? Sure. Um, I, what I What I found interesting was Kate saying... Oh, mom, I've, I've never, I've never seen you like this. And like, oh, my mom doesn't dance and th that type of stuff. And now I thought it was like, okay, this could go two ways. One is to illustrate that he is, he's actually pulling this out of her, you know, like he's so romantic and so good for her. She's a completely different person than she was. And then I was like, or she's fucking playing the ever living hell out of him. And she doesn't know her mom very well. Uh, 
like she Joel? maybe she doesn't like dancing. I was like, how fake is this entire scene with her being like, oh, oh, honey, oh, and secretly she's uh, like, yeah, I'm just using you to do my dirty work for me. And I've manipulated the records at Bishop Industries to make it look like you're it's all your fault because I secretly fucking hate you. Also, I killed your uncle uh, with one of your swords because you aren't shit to me and I fucking hate you. Yeah. Um, I had that vibe from her. I mean, she straight and, uh, up she straight up told Hawkeye like, hey, you got kids, right? Like <laughs> she straight up threatened his goddamn family. Inadvertently. She, yeah. she literally yeah. called in Black Widow. Right, that's what happened. Right, uh, I she put maybe, in the call and she's like, "We've got a problem." Uh, and then the next scene, Black Widow shows up. It was either her or it's Kingpin. It's more likely her. Part of me wants to believe it was Kingpin, but but even if she called Kingpin, no, it wasn't yeah, Kingpin. No, I, Kingpin's daughter was was one of the other fighters. That was her calling in, like, yeah. "Yo, <clears throat> that's exactly what that was." You're probably right. I don't think I. My personal theory is is that she wouldn't get her hands dirty like that. I I feel like she called somebody that would hire a widow for her, whether that's Kingpin or True. something else. And Kingpin might not know that his daughter is embroiled in this because uh, he literally says, uh, Clint says to one of the lieutenants, he says, I know that your boss doesn't like this publicity. I know that your boss thinks this is a huge liability, whoever that person is. Yeah. So I don't know who Echo is working for, but you should tell her to fucking drop this. And we actually see Kazi in the last episode telling her to drop it. So it could very well be that Kingpin's like, no, don't don't pursue this and I'll handle it. I'm going to send this widow to take care of this problem once and for all. And Echo's over here like, I'm going to deal with this Clint Barton issue. It could have it could have been the case that he sent that black widow not even knowing that his his kid, and we also don't know if it's his kid in the series, but not knowing that Echo would be involved, he might have been confused that why she was even Im- implicated in that. I because I just can't see the mom like directly getting involved and calling a widow in. I feel like well, she would have back would, I, I think for she that. would like have a person. You know, I, I agree, but I definitely think <clears throat> that she the reason why Lawrence shows up is because of that phone call from the mom, right? Like it seemed, it fit like- Whether it's direct or not, yeah. <laughs> like it felt like it made sense. I, I I think this is gonna put the mom at odds with Kingpin once he finds out that she called a widow oh, or that absolutely. like, you know, he's, he's like endangered his operation. He's probably gonna, even though they probably work together, cause I'm still firmly in the belief that Kingpin bailed her out. Like they're in business together. The other, the other- they were poor. Yeah. <clears throat> the other thing is that, uh, Kate's mom could have said that and then she just showed up because she thinks that Clint killed her sister and that's it. She just tracked him down, which also could be true. Mm-hmm. That has nothing to do I, with uh, Kate Bishop's mom. I want to just put this out there to all this, this like the super sleuths watching. Um, I don't know if I saw a thing and I was insane, but during the fight on the roof, yeah, there's a moment where the masked uh, assailant gets Sam, hit. Sam Fisher. And, and yeah, Sam Fisher gets hit and knocked to the ground. And there's a moment right before a quick cut where the mask comes off and you see white hair. And I was like, oh, oh, it's Florence. But then it cuts back and the mask is on. And then there's a reveal that it's her later. Yeah. Did that happen or am I crazy? Because it felt like an editing error. Might have been. Yeah, I, and I don't I recall. don't know if anyone else, I'm just putting it out there. It's not to add anything to this conversation. I just, it's been driving me. I think I saw that, and I was like, is that an editing error? Because the mask is immediately back on. Like, he didn't know that it was her, but then he did. I just put it out Well, there. he doesn't Go know. Go back and watch that fight scene. I'm pretty sure it happened. Clint doesn't know who that is, though. Regardless, right? He, no, he yeah, does. Yeah, he doesn't know who she is. No, how would he say, know? No, he just says they hired a widow. He doesn't know that that's oh, right, right, uh, right, right, her right, sister. Right, right, yeah, right. she yeah. she knew that she, that she was a widow because she was using the stun, the red stun things. Uh, yeah, but, but, the way yeah, she but fights. Like, but that's yeah. Natasha's. Like, I don't know. Natasha fucking right? kept secrets for a living. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> Natasha. He, he, he I mean, that's out. half of their fight too. Yelena literally is like, "You fucking abandoned me there, you bitch." That's like half of her storyline is like, yeah. "You got out and you never checked in on me. You never called. You never tried to see if I was okay." Um, yeah. So I because Clint she knows, was so though. detached, I, like would... I think I it's know. up in the air. I I don't know one way or the other because like even if Clint knew her name. How would he know what he? How would he know what she looks like, unless she shared a photo or something like that? I I have to believe that he knows, which is why he knows it's personal. But how how would believe. he know? Because Natasha would have told him because yeah, they that, literally the trusted each. They're the only people who trusted each other. I, they'll probably confirm it I, right out of the gate next episode on how he knows. Yeah, but, for sure, we'll find or, out. Or if yeah. he knows, I should I would, say. But there's a difference between saying like. Oh hey Jesse, we're friends. I just gotta tell you, like, when I escaped, like I left my sister behind. And between saying this is Yelena, this is what she looks like now. Totally. You know, like, right? Like, so even if he knows she has a sister, and I he says, he says, they hired a widow. Right? Well, I like, don't know that he would tell I don't know that he would tell Kate that's the sister of my friend who's dead and she like came after me, and I don't know why. I don't think that he trusts her that much, but you could be right. I mean, I, I honestly don't know. You could be absolutely correct. Yeah. I just feel well, the, like the important fact more stakes if he knows, you know what I mean? The, the, like, just from a writing standpoint. the important fact out of that fight is that he knows it's a widow, not necessarily that he knows that it's her sister. I think that will probably come as a, a realization when she says that, like you killed my sister thing randomly. And he's like, wait, what the fuck are you talking about? Yes. Um, yeah, I think that's going to happen. And too. he'll he'll probably think at first that it's like a Ronin situation, and then later, uh, you know, or something else will like cause her cause him to realize that like, oh, this is Natasha's sister. He would know her fighting style. Uh, that entire scene on the rooftop, to me, was a the reason you could tell he was getting um, not to use the word lightly, but you could tell he was getting triggered. Yeah, he was he was. For sure, having PTSD and that happened when she went off the side of the, was, the building as well. But I mean, it was it was start like the, there was a parallel. He was fighting someone that fights just like Natasha. Yeah, and then he has that scene where like Kate falls off. Like you could tell he was like in a very bad place mentally and emotionally at that point in time. Yeah, and I think like right. it wasn't hard for him to piece it together because they were trying to pull this parallel of like, of course he knows it's a widow. He fought Natasha. He was Natasha's best friend. She's using the same playbook. They were trained in the same place. Yeah. You know, of course. And so like it becomes a situation where it's like this is like this is too real for him in some ways, you know. Question for the group. Sure. Would Clint be uh, Ross knows. Would Clint be aware that the widows as an organization have ceased to exist? Because at this point, if she's coming after him, they've taken down the floating mothership that made no sense. So that I, like that. I think it, I think in the understanding of a uh, black widow, that the Avengers know that it's more like a title than it is a person. Absolutely. But I'm curious if he would be aware of the fallout of that. Yeah, that, that one, I don't know that that's something they'll either reveal or not reveal. You would think so with, you know, him yeah. being involved in the business, but yeah. I don't know. It seems like he's running under the operation that there's still a hireable mercenary group. Well, there, yeah, as opposed to independent. Right. 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 Like it kind of seems right. like he's like, oh yeah, this just got real. They hired a widow. Like, I mean, they clearly are like, hireable yeah. or at least. Well, you, like, well, we don't, we don't know that because we know that Yelena is hunting Clint it could be that, you know, Kate's mom, as since her entire job is security and information, knows that. And all she has to do is give her the coordinates. She doesn't even have to hire her. All she has to do is say, oh, by the way. Yeah, there's Clint. Your sister's yeah. solved my problem for me, too. Yeah, True. here you, here you go. I don't know why you're hunting him, but uh, we heard you've been looking for him. And uh, she doesn't, she might not even have to hire her. She just has to put the right information in front of the right person and her problem solved. And we kind of get that from the sense that Yelena does not try at any point to kill Kate. I don't think yeah, she was hired. She, because, like, she is very much there. It's like a per it is personal for her. You could tell from the way she's fighting 
that for her, she's like, I'm gonna kill this motherfucker. I, I think I think you have to be correct in the assumption that Clint doesn't know that Yelena is after him because if he did, he would have fought her. He being Clint would handle that. Like he would just like he's doing this with Kate. He would go out of his way. He wouldn't just be like, "See you at Christmas." Like that would <laughs> yeah. he clearly would make sure that it wouldn't affect his family. He would deal with the problem if he knew. So I yeah. think you're correct in that he has no clue, and we'll find out that he's like, "Oh crap!" Yeah, I think you're probably right. Yeah. What's interesting is I think Kate also knows she's not after her because she has her dead to rights and they share a look and then she runs. I think there's this moment where it's like, what, are you ready to kill a bitch? I think there's like that moment of like when it comes down to the wire, can you do it? And I think the other thing is, is like Kate realizing like she hasn't tried to kill me yet. Mm -hmm. Like she like like even when she threw her off the roof, she attached she specifically attach the buckle to her belt so that she wouldn't die. Um, and even with the zip line, she could have cut the zip line. Instead, she holds it up. So Kate can't come onto the, onto the roof. So I think like Kate isn't that stupid that she's like, Oh yeah, this, she's trying to kill me. I think Kate, especially in that last moment does realize like, this is about her and Clint. And I think in the next episode, she's going to point that out and be like, this is about there's there's something there because she didn't try to kill me. And that's also why I let her go. Yeah. And I think we're going to have that the big like revelation because what this is a six episode series. Yeah. And next episode <clears throat> episode five. So it's always the penultimate like we they have to have a conversation. And I think in this episode we got a little bit of her asking Clint like so this whole Ronan thing and him having to be like yeah about that. He didn't fess up to it, but she, I think she clearly knows. No, she right? straight up I, said you were Ronan. Did she say that, or was it implied she was saying that? Wait, who are we talking about? Kate Bishop straight up tells Kate Bishop. They have Clint. a scene where they're talking about Ronan, <clears throat> and she, I don't think she said you're Ronan, but she said something. She did? She Man, said you are Ronan, yeah. Mm-hmm. I forgot about that. Well, never mind. Yeah, it was during the drinking, or towards the end of the drinking. Uh, yeah she figured it out but i think that whole idea of what ronan did um is something that i think we need to here's what happened i'm sorry i was forgetting she called him out on it and he said nothing he didn't he didnn't answer but she didn't confirm it i think we need to have the moment from clint as a character where he says Oh, I did some terrible things. And he has yet to acknowledge that at all. Yeah. And he lets people just say stuff. And he has a character we've never seen him on screen say, like admit to his failings as a person to Kate. Yeah. Uh he did it to to you know Natasha when he was like, eh, don't give me hope. But like he's never just come to reckon with the fact that like he's done some terrible stuff. So Yeah. All right. I think, you know, in that kind of same tone or in that note. I have to say that um, I I do really like that his wife knows everything. Oh, his wife. I, hate I love that, their relationship. Yeah, it's great. I hate that trope where it's like, I got to hide this from my wife. And then the wife becomes like this nuisance. It's like, where are you? Oh, honey, I'm just going grocery shopping. I know you're lying to me. Are you cheating? Like, I hate that trope of like yeah. the annoying wife that is like, you know, constantly. I don't like it. Uh. I love that his wife is like, yeah, I'm supportive. All right. How are we doing with this? You need to stay there for a couple more days. What do you need? Do I need to call somebody? Uh, yeah. So here's the scoop on this dude. Uh, I looked up everything you needed me to look like. I love that. They are very much like partners. I, I, I do like that because I think that that is. Yes. That's how like somebody like Clint would raise kids. Like, how can he possibly have exist, a family yeah. and not tell her like, oh, by the way, some you know like i did all this like i love that she's like did you get the suit did you do this like i love that her character isn't one that's talked down to or not considered mm-hmm. like how do you marry somebody but then like oh i don't trust you with this stuff or i'm gonna yeah. actually put you in danger by not telling you that there's people that probably want to kill me i just that's just chef's kiss to me like Mwah, that she's just <laughs> like yeah. oh yeah okay we'll do what you gotta do you know if you, if you gotta stay for a few more days stay for a few more days you know so just real quickly, okay. real quickly. All right. Chat is saying that he said to 
Kate. Like after the blip, people did some things, or you well, know, he like, says everyone dealt with the blip in their own way. Yes, Ma- a line. to clarify, I'm saying just from like a storytelling standpoint, the growth of Clint can only come from him saying what he did rather than being like bad things happened. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like acknowledging that that dude went around murdering, like he killed Echo's dad. And Echo's dad was just like a chop shop guy. You know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. Where he, he killed a shit ton of people. Art yeah. He's acknowledging the terrible things he did that created other worse things like Echo. Right? Let me, let me ask you, I, I'm curious what the two of you think here. Do you think that in, in the show, in episode six, that either there is a true death of Clint or a like on screen death for Clint? And then it shows him like hanging out with his family so that he can like finally get away from this life. Do you think they do anything in terms of death with his character? Clint? Yeah, with Hawkeye. No, I think Hawkeye's fine. I think, you think Hawkeye, he just like wraps uh, this up, puts a bow on, it, and goes home for Christmas. Literally, Hawkeye walks in the door, and they're gonna be like, they're gonna play a Christmas song. <laughs> this will be the first time a Christmas song isn't played with murder in the background. They're gonna play "I'll Be Home for Christmas." Most likely. Yeah, like something something sweet and his kids will be like, Daddy and that'll be and then we'll get like a happy ending. It's a holiday it's a holiday yeah. film. Yeah. It's gonna be fine. He'll be fine. So we get a happy I think, ending. I I think he is going to uh, there's been so much talk about the costume and I'll get into like because that was one of the parts of the episode I just didn't understand to me was like cringe was the the bringing back of the whole larp you just take the larp so weird and look you're just against i do it's because it just feels weird to me where it's like i was like seeing them practice with weapons was weird larpers don't i I don't hang out with larpers i don't think they go to the park and like practice swinging their fake swords on a sunday afternoon i don't think that's something they do that was a little bit strange there's just stuff that felt really shoehorned in to me you know yeah and like like even like the whole thing with the bag of like my wife made this for me like i'm gonna need it back like i feel like they're just intentionally so awkward that i'm like are you i don't don't know as 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 a larper oh is bronze wait are you a larper bronze are you larper adjacent she's larper Uh, adjacent adjacent. okay larper adjacent okay I, i like I like Hema shit. I like like uh, people that actually fight. Like does real it, does it like? I mean, like it's one of those like as a person who you know is dressed up going to, like the Renaissance fair. Does mm-hmm. it yes, ring, that's me. Yeah, does it ring as like they're kind of making fun of these people? Is that the vibe you're getting? I said that last time too, and there are people in the YouTube comments like some of us do take it seriously. I need you to know I cringe at you because most of us it's like a <laughs> hobby, and then we go back to like you know. Like, I do not walk around every day practicing like, oh, yes, I am the ambassador from Persia. Come to the Washington State Renaissance Fair. Wait, and I will go Bronze. to the park and Bronze. practice. You Here's know, like difference. most of us. You do this every week, multiple times. You just call it a show. They just call it their free time. You know what I'm saying? Well, but, but like even <laughs> D&D <laughs> nerds, right? Like we will play D&D and then come here and talk about the MCU. Like usually people that are nerdy have multiple spheres that overlap. And that is a very small part of like who we are as individuals. Sure. I think when it becomes a very large part of who you are, that's when you get people that are overly attached to a fandom and start sending death threats to movie creators because <laughs> they didn't like a film. Unlike to the rest degree, of us, yeah. they're like, well, at least I like all these other things, you know, to like, like Jesse's a Star Wars super fan. You don't see him out here on Twitter threatening to kill people because they ruined oh, Star I've Wars. It's much easier like, when they ruin a thing for you. Uh, I've seen his yeah, he's just like bronze, okay? Star Wars sucks. Uh, anyways, moving on. Here's all these other things I like. Jesse I'll Cox watch them with instead. a K on Twitter. Oof. You don't want to get onto that alt account. That's vile. <laughs> That's my hentai account. Don't worry about You cannot that. say Cox with a K because that just sounds like, I don't know, that just sounds very sinister. <laughs> I'm right. That's why it's his alt account on Twitter. It's I the most sinister, heinous shit racist. I've ever seen. I don't know why. If you said Jesse Cox with a K, I'd be like, oh, that's the timeline where Jesse's a white supremacist. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Like, that's... Wow. Jeez. Like, I don't know why. In my brain, I think it's because of games like Wolfenstein or something where I'm like, oh, if it's a K, it's like... Hold on. Probably... Then what's what's Jesse Cox with a Q? Is that when he's like a wizard or something? Like, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's when he's a wizard okay. and right. a, a, he's a gay space wizard. 
Welcome to my gay space wizard ship. Come aboard to adventure and magic, right? And then with a K, he's like, I want to see your papers. Right? I get it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yes, you get it, Jesse. You yeah. get it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I don't like Jesse Cox with a K. I don't like that guy. Whew. I love all the other versions of Jesse Cox, though. Yeah. But yeah, I I think like it feels like it's a it's a running gag that for me the joke never lands. But I was saying that even with like the the taser face thing, like I think I have a personal oh, weirdness. No, that never like if landed. the joke doesn't land, like when they keep doing it, that I'm like inside me i don't know what it is me and jeff used to talk about this a lot where i'd be like let it go let it go like yeah. just like it, it's not working let it go so for me and i'm sure some people found the larp bits funny so just a personal thing uh for me the larp bit has never landed where i've been like ha ha so i'm like oh gosh guys kind of just let this bit go it's not working you have so many bits that are working go with those why are we pursuing this bit that just feels very shoehorned in but the narrative part of it that I kind of see, uh, which is relevant to the this question of whether or not how Clint is going to get out of this, right? They keep yeah. talking about the costume. Uh-huh. And Clint is clearly very pissed every time Kate brings it up. Because even when she's like, it's a marketing thing, we'll change the costume. I was saying in the last episode that to me it's very clear that Clint views, those are things that Ronan did. But those aren't things that Hawkeye did. And Haw- this is the, you know, when I'm Hawkeye, I'm not those things. For me, it's going to be him realizing that Hawkeye and Ronan are intertwined. And therefore, he can't be Hawkeye without also being Ronan. I think he's going to step away and let Kate take on Hawkeye. I, th- I think he is going to realize he cannot be Hawkeye without owning up to the fact that it was Hawkeye that did those things. That was not a different person. That was him. It was the same dude. Because you can change a suit and be the same person. Yeah. Because they keep coming back to this suit thing. If, if they don't go that way with it, with and instead it's just a gag about how she's, a, you know, a Zoomer and she wants to brand, I'll be so fucking disappointed because <laughs> w- the way I am reading it, you know, narratively is like, no, the suit is not what makes you Hawkeye, bro. If you change the suit, you're still the same person. And him realizing, but that means that I, I was Hawkeye and I was Ronan. I did both of those things. Hawkeye is Ronan. Ronan is Hawkeye, and you cannot separate the two just by changing your clothes because when you change your clothes, you're the same person underneath. You're the same hero or villain underneath. I think he's going to say, you know what? I'm done with this, and if you want to clean up this legacy, make a new one. I I think that's what's going to happen. And that's how he becomes the arrow. (laughs) On CW. Green arrow. He moves (laughs) to Seattle. Yeah, he's going to protect that goddamn city. Bronze, great idea. I th- I wish they did that. Oh, Jesse's gonna hit us with it. We're smarter than those writers. We are smarter than the right. I think because we have all this time to like sit and reflect on what should be. You're absolutely correct. The whole point of this show should be what like he thinks he's not a hero, but Kate sees the hero in him. Yeah, like, that kind of like it's so obvious what it should be. But every every time we're just like, this is what's gonna happen, and they're like, actually, do you, it was. Do you want to go even deeper spell. with it, Jesse? Do you want to go even even deeper with it? Take me away. He, Take me down to deep town. He, he presents a version of himself that he wants to sort of affect Kate in a positive way, right? Yes. Like he is giving her a model. version of himself that he hopes is going to inspire her to be a good person because he understands, as someone with kids, how impressionable they are, right? And he keeps trying to obfuscate some things. He has, and she keeps saying, "You're part. We were partners, no secrets, all this stuff." There's one moment he is vulnerable with her, and it is the moment that he doesn't want to be, and it's like a negative part of him that he wants to hold back, but. It is the most important lesson she learns. So he tells her all this stuff like, oh, be, be humble. It's about quick exits, this, that, and the other. A story he says about how he was sent to essentially murder someone and that he didn't, and that person became his best friend, is the one reason, part of, 
probably the one reason why Kate doesn't shoot Yelena. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, I think that's and now she heavily. is going to have her own Black Widow. Yes, that is her best friend. Heavily so implied. the one thing he tried to hide from her to make her uh, like or, or like there's this nasty past or this part of vulnerability he wanted to keep from her that tinged his shiny view is the one thing that made her a better person. So telling her about all the shit he did as Ronan is going to make her a better person. He is it's going to affect her, but he still has to go on that journey. He still has to mentally figure out that. I cannot make her the best version of me without telling her all the shit that I did that was fucked up. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I think that's heavily implied in the show, 100%. And it, it, mm-hmm. it sets them up as well for the Young Avengers shit where it, it's all but confirmed, I think, at this point. And I think this is why I am expecting, just from a writing standpoint, and by I'm no, by, I'm no like, writer master but i've watched enough and seen enough and been in enough to know that the way you sell the whole like and then clint finally gets to be free from all this burden is the man just has to like open up more than just some brown stuff happened like he needs <laughs> well, he's got some, some pretty bad PTSD. for him to grow he can't just like walk away and be like kate you're the next version of me he has to impart like the knowledge that we as an audience get to see him reckon with all the things he's done in his life and, you know, be able to acknowledge that, like, he didn't kill Natasha, right? Like, all his burdens have to be lifted by the time he walks away so that he can go off into the sunset and have his family and do his own thing, and now we have Kate, who's the new Hawkeye, that kind of stuff. Like, it has to happen if it's done well. I guess we'll see. Yeah, I mean, they've only got, what, two 40-minute episodes left, so there, there's a lot that they have, a lot of ground they got to cover, as well as every other storyline in the actual show itself. So uh, will they actually get there and will they land it? We'll just we'll just have to see. Um, I do wonder as well if, because of the timing of this, if, uh, if they're timing it so this week Matt Murdock's in Spider-Man and Kingpin is in Hawkeye. That we, would be so. If we get a reveal so of uh, Kingpin, I would eat it up. Could be like a co-reveal. Yeah, yeah. Could happen because what wasn't the wasn't the rumor that Kingpin would show up in episode five and Yelena would be in four? I, I want to say that we said that was real. If that's ages true, ago. if we if Wednesday we get a Kingpin, you better watch out for your for your DMs, you two, because I'm gonna be like. Well, no, I won't. I probably won't watch. Uh, I won't watch it till most likely Sunday after Spider Man because Aaron's oh, gonna be traveling. I'm so shit, I'll oh, be you like, son of a bitch. I won't say anything. You'll just know because I'll go. Yo, 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 yo. I'm gonna send yeah. you Final Fantasy 14 spoilers, Jesse Cox. You watch yourself. <laughs> Never mind. I won't message you. <laughs> Don't you put that shit on me. <laughs> uh, yeah. To be honest, I couldn't spoil that if I tried. Uh, <laughs> anyways uh anything else from uh hawkeye episode four you guys want to bring up i mean i think you're right on the money i think this episode uh was super fun i think it's only getting better as the show goes on and uh they once again we got a christmas music to action scene or like sneaky scene so i i love the holiday tropes huge fan of the holiday action film more of them, please. Yeah. Thank you. I, I also think this episode, once again, just like in episode three, highlighted the uh, the like relationship between Kate Bishop and Hawkeye and both the actors just being able to play off of each other so well uh, in any scene that they're in. Specifically that that uh, drinking scene where they're like throwing the quarters and fucking bending it around the, the corner and all that shit. It was great. We'll see more of that. Gonna, do you think we're going to get like a... A scroll thing like when sam jackson needs you oh for for clint like what is clint gonna do after the show no, i'm talking about kate like it, oh. it's gonna be like all right well see you see you later thanks kate i think and Hawkeye goes home and kate gets to, like she sits down and there's a knock on the door and it's like you just beat up your mom slash crime boss i think yelena we need you in face i think yelena is gonna be like hey you should come hang out with me 
uh, help, old, help you train or some shit like that. Because I think I think at the end of this series, Kate and her mom, like there's going to be the reveal and Kate's going to realize that her mom killed her dad or something like that uh, or some bad shit. And there's going to be a complete separation and Kate's going to go off on her own. How insane would that be? If during an alien invasion, the mom was like, now's my chance to kill the dad. What a crazy plot point that is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, we never get to see exactly how he died, right? It's just assumed that it was like rubble. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. And the mom takes forever to find her kid, which is like a weird thing. Yeah. It's very suspicious. It's, if that it's, turns out to be nothing, I'm going to be like, that's just a terrible mother. Well, it, it's either that or her dad was keeping the secret from her mom. And then as... He was dying. He told her everything that was happening and she had to just take all that on um, or something like that. Or we go back yeah. to the idea that like Kingpin somehow comes in and pays off all their debts and that's how she turns into a bad guy or something. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, or or maybe her dad's still alive. Maybe, maybe her dad's the one. Maybe this whole thing about Kingpin being the head of all this is a big debate and her dad's the head of all this. Her dad is Kingpin? Or, well, no, not Kingpin. Her dad's just the head of whatever this crime syndicate bullshit is. And it's all a big debate. If that if it happens again, if we get Quicksilvered again. I think that one would hurt more than a Daredevil uh, or, or than a, a Spider-Man one for me. Because I'm more like, I don't really care to see Toby and fucking Andrew Garfield for like 30 seconds on, on film. But I would care more to see a Vincent D'Onofrio in, into the MCU than uh than not so hear me out we'll have to see crack crackhead theory okay oh crackhead bronze theory Ooh, a new bronze enters these are the best these are the best ones (laughs) okay the dad faked his death so they could pay out the insurance policy to get themselves out of debt okay and now he's like a shadow broker and he has his wife cavorting with the swordsman uh, for no other reason. That's why she's putting on this whole act uh, to use him. And uh, he's uh, they're still in love. And that's why when she calls him, she's like, you know, hey, we got to worry about our kid. Like this Clint thing's got to be dealt with. And he's still pulling all the strings from behind the walls. And they, they his death was just very conveniently time to get them out of debt. I mean, wouldn't be it doesn't sound that far fetched. Could be real. And it would, would also it would also get Kate to be like fuck both of you I'm done I'm gonna go do my own thing yeah yeah I would love because the they're both they both do it yeah of that moment as the aliens are arriving and the husband and wife are like this is the perfect opportunity <laughs> we gotta we pay to off our debt <laughs> <laughs> she okay but, uh, think about could, this if you were in love with someone they couldn't do it you were in love with someone like you love them that's your that's your partner that's your spouse. Sure. Doesn't her reaction seem weird? Like, come on, Kate, we got to go. Your dad's dead. You would be like, we've got to get your father help. Like these, you know, like, how is she so sure he's dead? How is she? Well, why she is she him. so ready to leave his body behind? She killed him. What? Like, like something happened there. Am I crazy? Like, you know, I'm not saying, oh, she can't be logical in that moment. But like most people would be like, let's get him help. Unless she was so. So it's like, did his head get crushed by a piece of falling ballast? Like. How is she so sure that he's dead, that he can't be saved, that there's no way? She killed him. Unless she, she killed, killed him, him or unless she they're lying. The man. And then we're going to find out. She watch, watch the new husband suddenly end up dead by the end. Watch it happen. Oh, so you think she's a actual black widow? I mean, like, yeah, but in like the sexy femme fatale way. Yes. Yeah. 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 Like she just keeps. Yeah. I mean. That would help her with her money. Good. Because she's going to marry this dude. He's He launders money. So you know he's got it. I've been watching Ozark. <laughs> also, that show is great. Ozark's pretty good. You know, I had to stop uh, episode, or season three. But yeah, it's pretty good. It's dark. It gets, it gets dark. But yeah. uh, I'm assuming that this dude's made of money. And I feel like she's going to... Jerry took the uncle out, so maybe he just inherited even more. Or maybe he was onto her schemes. Maybe. If, you, if you're out, working for Kingpin and you're like trying to consolidate the like you know, all the crime in the city, 
under one. You take out all the other crime bosses. And this family clearly you has sex connections. With them and, and marry them first. Look, if I could, Bruce. I would. I would sex, marry, murder as many people as I could. <laughs> if I had it, if I was, if I was a, that's like a, a black widow, I'd do uh, it. Uh, that's a Jesse with uh, a CH Cox right there. <laughs> C O C H S. Yeah. C. No, sure. Fuck that guy. Sure. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, last but maybe most important. How do we feel about boomerang arrows? Why would you use them? They come right back at you. It's a valid point. Clinton had a valid point. It's not smart. So the the comic, uh, that was a direct thing from the comics. But it was actually reversed where Clint was boomerang arrow uh, fan and Kate thought they were stupid. Well, even they are this stupid. this. <laughs> episode was heavy on the comic references. There was a lot. Yeah, this this was definitely a comic uh, love letter episode, which maybe the next two we're yeah. going to get like the MCU uh, focus and then kind of start going the way of the, the fraction run. We'll I will see. say the idea of, a, of pizza dog being in the show scared me because I was like, okay, well, one eye dogs are cute in comics, but, you know, in the show I might be like, this is poor dog. This is so sad. Nah, but then yeah. he's on the a Christmas episode. Now that it, now that he's like washed and yeah. seeing him in the Christmas episode all clean, I was like, I'm so happy for Pizza Dog. What an adorable yeah. baby. He finally Dude, found a home. I actually got but kind they, of upset. When they first showed him in the first 10 seconds, I was like, why is P Pizza Dog is depressing in the show? Like in the comic, it's cute, but in the show you just see a one-eyed, scraggly dog, and you're like, ah, no, help I him. I was pretty upset because the dog just walks straight into the apartment and immediately just takes a giant chomp out of like those chips and a plate. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck dog? Like, what, <laughs> what are you doing? With that? I was like the Clint's is a get out of there. Yeah. I was like, this is how, you know, he's not Indian. Cause for us, we'd be like, you might as well just have this. I'm not going to eat this. Now. Yeah. Clint didn't give a shit. He just like, kept he's, eating just, it. he's like, get out of there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah. <laughs> also, to everyone asking, how does a boomerang arrow work? The setup in the comics is that Kate is at gunpoint, okay? And the guy says, get rid of the arrow because she's got, like, the arrow trained on the on a person. Um, and so she shoots the arrow, and the guy says, all right, and he lets his guard down, and then the boomerang arrow comes back and hits the gun. And I bet you we see a similar thing somewhere in episode five or six. That is dumb but more importantly <laughs> the, uh, i think we've already established that like the whole idea of hawkeye is he can trick arrow so the idea of a, like he could just curve it like in that one crappy movie where like they wanted. curved the bullet it wasn't a crappy yes. movie i've referenced wanted almost every day of my life jesse well you can still reference crappy movies it's fine <laughs> i do it all the time were they like throw it and they go yes, over they projectile. Any, oh, anytime oh, I anytime i die in an fps and there's a lag because i'm behind a wall i'm just like oh it's fucking star wanted i say that joke i think about 20 times a week and my chat is so tired of me saying it for almost 10 years straight <laughs> but it's fucking but true it's but i think the idea of being like a great archer is you could like i angled the bow or some nonsense yeah the yeah, idea yeah. of just having a boomerang bow if you hit your target, it never comes back. That's the whole point. Like, if you hit something, it's still not going to come back. Well, so here, I'll I'll show I'll just show you the the proper the conversation comic. they were having is is if you find like you only have so many bows, so you got to collect the bows afterwards. Wait, right. the arrows, not the bows. The bows makes no yeah. sense. Arrows, <laughs> arrows. The bows yeah, yeah. would be a problem. <laughs> You only have so bring, many bows. They just the throw the bow. <laughs> like, like you know, the idea was like they were saying if you fire the villains arrows, throw the gun after they're out of bullets. They're like, yeah, throw yes. it, and it's like, oh. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, at, like every good John Wick villain. Yeah. Like. <sighs> so there's the comic. Uh, this is the set. Here, I'll just read it because I I can't make it any bigger because this is on Tumblr for some reason, and it just resizes. There you go. That works. Oh, there he goes. Yeah. 
Uh, so there, he says fish night or fish night kind of fell out of this one. Uh, come on, Kate. That's my net arrow. You got to respect the gear there. Uh, there, Hawkeye like this, the boomerang arrow, Kate, it comes back to you in the end boomerang, respect it. And then they kind of just go on to talking about whatever. And then the yeah, and his answer, because boomerang is the most Hawkeye answer I've ever because heard in my boomerang. life. Yeah. So yeah. Boomerang. And then here's the actual, uh, scene. She gets rid of her arrow. And then it says boomerang arrow <laughs> it comes back and shoots. And he says boomerang arrow comes back to the end. I think we're going to get a similar payoff from that sequence. I, I, the concept of a, like the overall use of a boomerang arrow is insane. It's one of those things like, that I feel like it mostly just works in a comic book. Cause there's some stuff that's like, they had a uh, pim arrow. They shot a fucking arrow on a, br- talking about some weird, consistency here they shot a goddamn pim arrow that smashed the side of a bridge to shit and no one right. it. <laughs> I you mean, know what to look- me was weird about that is that they are so defensive about who gets access to pim particles yeah oh yeah in the movies they, spe- they specifically established that like not everybody can get access to these because hank pim got screwed over by Stark yeah, but, Industries, but and now he uh, very jealously guards his like tech. And, and Civil War wasn't Hawkeye was on the team with uh, with Ant Man, so they probably had a, a friendship. Oh, so I guess maybe they maybe him. they became yeah. friends. Yeah, remember he fired him in the tip of the arrow to yeah. go into Iron Man suit or Iron I, Man uh, or War Machine. I think it was War Machine suit. Yeah. Anyways, same thing. I I guess I have so to maybe give in they on the friends after that. Yeah. Like, it's fine. Boomerang arrow was fine at one point. He literally shot Ivan Ooze at a car. So, like, there doesn't, it doesn't matter. There are no rules. Boomerang arrow is fine. The, the, the ooze, all it did was, like, I can't see. Like, eh, whatever. Yeah, all right, boomerangs. It's fine. I don't oh. care. What the hell do I care? Ivan all the arrows. God damn. Jesse, did you Ivan ever Ooze? listen to the Power Rangers uh, soundtrack? Um, I know the entire full length. Power Rangers song. Do you remember the, the Alpha has, like, song? A and a half build up. That's like, oh yeah. Do you remember the Alpha <laughs> song? Oh yeah. Power if- Rangers, man. You y'all y'all kids don't get it. When the Power Rangers movie came out and Lord Zed showed up, that's pretty hype. That was big. That was a big. And more importantly, Bulk and Skull saved that town. Like we all agree, those two yeah, saved they did. the town. Yeah. Yeah. I- I'm just putting that Power Rangers didn't do shit. Those two saved. The, they were the heroes. All right. Just put it out true. there. That's true. Mm-hmm. Also, for anyone that doesn't know what I'm talking about and really wants to cringe real bad right now, definitely try to find the song I, 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 I by Alpha on the Power Rangers. Oh, the I don't movie know soundtrack. that. Oh, I don't know that. Oh, you don't know that? Okay. Uh, I, I, I. I know that. That's oh, how no, Rangers. That's how the oh, song guy. starts off, and then uh, it's it's not third eye blind, but it's like third eye vo- third eye blind uh, vocals singing I I I I I uh, is the chorus. It's that song. It's it's legitimately one of the cringe uh, most cringe inducing things I've ever heard, without a doubt, without a doubt. So you can uh, Google the it. The nineties were a different time, my friend. Yeah. I, I actually can't find it on the internet right now, which makes me think that they've deleted it from existence. <laughs> Shout which out is, to which is not an easy third, thing to do. Third III blind is great. That's amazing. <laughs> what a great that's great. That's so good. I I I let me see. Oh no, throw it on. Oh for find me some. We're talking about the nineteen ninety five, by the way, movie. Yeah. With this, was, this was right in the middle of the 90s. This is peak 90s. Oh, that's right. Red Hot Chili Peppers and Devo were on, and Van Halen were all You'll on get this. get it. The Power Rangers movie was huge. That was the biggest film at the time. Oh, yeah. Here it is. It's it's uh, spelled A-Y-E-Y-A-I-Y-A-I. I-I-I. Alpha Song by Power Jet is the name oh, of the song. Oh, no, bronze. Alpha, on me a bronze girl with attitude. I'm going to link this in chat. Good luck. If you guys want to cringe and listen to it. Uh, I'm not cringing. I refuse. I put I'm going to live well. vicariously through my own past and not ruin it. It's bad. It's bad. I will not go back and rewatch that film, 
Uh, it was fine oh, it was pretty good. in the 25 years since it came out. I'm not going back to ruin it for me. The film's pretty good. Probably. I mean, it was probably pretty good. No, he's probably terrible. Never mind. Anyways. Uh, oh, yeah. Everyone in the chat's hitting the course, and now they're realizing how bad it you is. You know what you need to do? Go look up the full Power Rangers song. They've got. Right? Oh, my God. It's great. <laughs> Bronze wasn't into Power Rangers is what I'm gathering. Uh, well, they, they, I was, but I was like super young, so I don't remember like ninety percent of it. I did dress up as a Power Ranger for Halloween one year when I was like six or seven, and I had the action figures. My brother was the Red Ranger, and the only one they had was the Pink Ranger. Even though I believe at the time I wanted to be the White Ranger. Oh, White Tommy! I was gonna was say you seem like a Green Ranger. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I had a big yeah. crush on Tommy. Well, the thing is, is this is how you really know uh, a little bit about the age gap is I didn't know about the Green Ranger until later because uh, you about by the, the white time Ranger I was first. watching, he was dead. Well, yeah, the yeah. Green Ranger became yeah. the White Ranger. It makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah. I get it. Yeah. yeah. So like I would. Yeah, I didn't really know about the Green Ranger. I knew about the White Ranger. and I thought he was really cool because he had the whole. Didn't he have like a tiger? Yeah, he did. Motif? You know, man yeah. had a yeah. flute. Yeah, he's, well, they, yeah. he had a flute. The Green Ranger had a giant, like a giant fucking dinosaur. Uh, and then the White Ranger had a tiger. Yep. A tiger. And wasn't his he flute had, like, like a, a tiger sword? Thing on his helmet a, a dagger? Yeah, it was a dagger. Yeah, and he would like. Well, the yeah. dagger was a flute, yeah. which the, was awesome. That's yeah, what I'm saying. I thought, the dagger was I a flute that had a lion's head on the hilt. Yeah. Yeah, I thought he was very cool, but. Uh, costumes weren't as progressive back then i feel like so there was like two or three you could choose from it was a dragon and the girls right, yeah. yeah there was like a i don't know there's like a weird component there sure makes sense i Jesse. don't think i was woke enough to understand that i could shop from the boys section and that it didn't really matter right jesse i just <laughs> realized that uh tommy going from green to white ranger was our generation's super saiyan goku moment 100%. You're absolutely totally correct. Because uh, we didn't, I mean, we did have DBZ, uh, but that wasn't until like 97, it was 90, 98, like, 97, Yeah, it was like towards yeah. the end because I remember my friend Mike was really, he collected all the VHS of Dragon oh, Ball yeah. Z yeah. and it made like a, the giant dragon. And, and I love that. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So yeah, they were was, they were kind of like the same generation the chat, but they were like maybe three, four years difference. I want to say Power Rangers, Green Ranger, White Ranger was like 94, 95, and Goku Super Saiyan was like 98. Yeah, 97, Power Rangers Tsunami. was when I was in leaving elementary, going into like seventh, eighth grade. Yeah. And then DBZ was like when I was like rounding out high school. Yeah. 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 DBZ yeah. was huge towards the end of the 90s. Oh yeah, big absolutely. time! Like everyone was like, Girl. yeah. For me, that was uh, elementary school, and we were obsessed, like because we just gotten tsunami. Uh, with, oh, with uh, with Dragon Ball Z, yeah, 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 yeah. We had just gotten tsunami. I wasn't in middle school yet, and it was like our first introduction to anime, and so we were all watching. Like, like I remember it would play right after you came home from school. It was reboot Sailor Moon. Yep. And Dragon Reboot. Ball Z, Toonami wasn't its own channel yet. It was just something that happened. It happened during Cartoon Network. Cartoon yeah. Network. yeah. Correct. It'd be like, Toonami, here's all the anime. And uh, all of us, I feel like we're obsessed with it. And I was, we all had our favorite characters. This is the most embarrassing thing about me and my childhood I will ever tell you. For some godforsaken reason, I do not know why, my favorite was Krillin. And it is only as an adult that I realized that this guy, this dude loses a lot. But as a kid, oh, yeah. he was. It was yeah. all Krillin. Now it's like Piccolo. Uh, teenage years onwards, I was like Piccolo, Team Piccolo, every single time. He's so cool. He's the dad, you know. Yeah, Piccolo is pretty. Gohan never pretty had. BA. He's the greatest character of all time. But when I was young, I was like Krillin, and I don't know why. Mine was Trunks. I thought Trunks was. I think Trunks was kind of the badass because he had a sword. I was like, oh my god, this motherfucker's got a sword. Uh, but he was kind of a bitch till later, anyways. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean that's all great. Mm. Are you a Yajiroshi? There's only one. There's only, one, there's only one real hero. Yeah, the entire show. No, you're probably a Matt. Oh, you're Yajiroshi. I thought you were going to be a Master Roshi. 
fanboy. Um, look, Master Roshi is who I am. <laughs> like I know what I am. <laughs> um, but no, I think like uh, look, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say something. I'm okay. gonna say something. Okay. The Yajiroba, whatever. If you were a Vegeta guy, Sam. You like one of them edgy, like wannabe cool guys. Stripping. You like really want people to think you're cool. Stripping. But like, you know, you ain't. You ain't cool. You're, you're not like, shit stripping. Yeah, yeah, you ain't <laughs> you ain't shit. <laughs> I don't know. I always found it funny that people were like, Vegeta's the best. I was like, yeah, he's he's like fun. He's a good anti hero. Yeah. Like he's not. Yeah, like, Vegeta's <laughs> not my favorite, but I love him. I, yeah. I don't know why. I just yeah. like that he's like is a freaking asshole. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He's fun, but if Vegeta's your favorite guy, I'm like, he's a dick. Like, he's not a good guy. He's so he's a shit. I like, love it. I love it. I love, like, his first appearance on the screen where he's like, ha, you idiot. <laughs> you know, he basically shows up. You guys suck. You're freaking losers. <laughs> I'm Vegeta. And you're like, ha, this fucking guy. It's true. Oh, man. And here is... The moment where I make this real depressing. Guys, that show came out a quarter of a century ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I and was just saying. nerds still watch it. That's some lasting power. DBC's got some hype to it, Holy y'all. Holy shit. That's some lasting power. I hope I make well, something that is relevant DBC in a quarter crosses, of a century. DBC crosses the divide between nerd and, like, dude who wants to be buff mm. like there's this weird gap where like bro dude and nerd align together on dbz being awesome because all <laughs> it is is like eight episodes of a dude flexing until he can flex more he's like Hugh! and then well, a lot of the themes in dbz are super relatable right like it's a lot of it is about like it's a, like the rocks rap song you know, by determination. Oh, oh. Sorry. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I didn't hear I, rock, I, and I just heard it's like the rap song. I was like, what? But then you said rocks. Yeah, it's true. I love yeah. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, but that song was hilarious. Uh, but, you know, it's it's like I think people relate to that uh, in different facets of their lives. I love that, Akoto. It's about drives, about power. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it's like where is the theme. AMV of that? Where is the AMV? There, oh, it exists. Right? That song plus DBZ. It has to. Because it's, it to those exist. themes are universally relevant. It doesn't matter whether you're Indian. I remember kids in India that like DBZ. It doesn't matter whether you're like into fitness or into something else. Like, I think the reason we it's like this concept of like pushing past your own boundaries. And I think most people are inspired by things like watching goku get beaten to the ground and still coming out on top or yeah. watching one of his many training montages i still remember like i said i was a baby when i watched these i still remember him running all the way back on that dragon road from being dead and i remember thinking the rest of y'all losers are just sitting here waiting for someone to get the dragon balls together and wish you back and this dude was like fuck it i'm just gonna run yeah and it was narratively great physically boring because you're sitting there oh, watching Goku uh, run it was for like 17 worst episodes. Arc of the ep- it was so fucking bad. It's like a 10 year old. I was just like, God yeah. dang it, I hate When this is he going to get back? <laughs> get him back already, right? Yeah. But it was awful. When you, Even as a kid, that stuck with me because everyone else is just sitting there like, do it, get the Dragon Balls and wish me back. And, and he's like, yeah, y'all sit here waiting. I'm going to go do the thing. I'm running. It's yeah. going to be hard. It's going to be boring. It's going to suck for the next 17 episodes. I'm just going to run back. I'm not going to wait for somebody else to come give me the shot that I want. It's true. It's true. You know what? Uh, I just want to let you know. Okay. Hmm. What do you want to let us know? And then we're wrapping the episode. It wasn't until years later. And this is a person who watched all of DBZ. It wasn't until years later. Wait, like that I realized and everything? All the names on that show suck. They're all like all of the all of the characters who are like what do you mean you know saiyans and stuff straight up just like vegetables right like 
half the people are named after instruments. Yeah, like they're literally all the names are garbage. Like it's just I didn't realize that till much later. I was like, oh yeah. Like Kakarot and Vegeta. They're all just like a vegetable slightly twisted. All of them. Wait, Go what's look a, at what's every a Vegeta? One of their, like, what vegetable? Yeah, is vegetable. A ve- clothes that like clothes people, uh music instruments. Like it's crazy how lazy it is, but it's also genius. And that's, I never realized it. I never, re- like, everyone in that show is named after a thing that exists. And Vegeta, he is Vegeta because he's vegetable because he was, like, the biggest badass of them all. It's true. And so he was, but then everyone else was like, oh, yeah, this is uh, Brawly. But, you know, Broccoli. Like, <laughs> like that's crazy. It's crazy. I thought, well, okay. That one might be kind of a stretch. The other ones I see, no, though. It's Brawly. Brawly, are you Kakarot, saying all all soup all radits, Saiyans are vegetables? Raditz, the radish dude. Just think about Wait, it. So it's, it's crazy. Radish, all, all Saiyans are carrot vegetables. Carrot and broccoli. Yes. Raditz, Kakarot, Vegeta. The planet Brawly. is also called vegetable. What? What's the name of their planet? The Bulma family are all underwear. What? This is too much. Cauliflower? Yeah, chat's on this. Yes. Oh, it's it's Planet Napa? Vegeta? Oh, Planet Na- Vegeta. Napa? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what's Napa? What do you think about it? It's wild. What is, I did what not is know Napa? that until much later. What's Napa? The uh, 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 trunks? Oh, my God. Wait, like the Napa cabbage. Oh, Napa is cabbage. Okay. Yeah. Even the valley, Napa Valley grapes. Well, I knew Napa Valley, yeah. Yeah, I didn't realize it was a type of Japanese cabbage, though. Oh, my huh. man. So, uh, yeah, if you just look up all the names, all of them are just, like, a version of, a like, an object. <laughs> it's there you go. Learn something new every day. You learn something new every day. Well, that was a two-and-a-half-hour podcast, as you do. Hopefully, we killed enough time oh for your, till your flight, Jesse. <laughs> Balma, bra, briefs, trunks, get out of town. I didn't even, I didn't even think they were all underwear. Yeah. I just was like, clothes. You're right. It's all underwear things. Oh yeah. my god, it's true. It's true. All right, let's do some shout outs. I hope everyone enjoys their Spider Man week. We'll be here next Monday, chit chatting about it, one way or the other. Probably still talking about Jesse. Will still be figuring out DBZ naming nomenclatures i just realized that there's an entire group of people named after chilly weather people are blowing my mind right now (laughs) wait who uh frieza king cold um there are more i can't remember them right now like there's a whole thing oh my we gotta end the stream y'all this is upsetting me Broads do setting outs. Broccoli and broly is where I I clocked out. I clocked out at broccoli and broly. I'm sorry. I was like, I can't do this anymore. I have to step away. Wait, so what was Krillin health. then? Was Krillin just a random thing? No, no. Is Krillin supposed to be like a shrimp? Oh, like krill. Krillin. Mm, good question. You guys want to see some real fucked up shit? Look at when Krillin had hair. Krillin is apparently a type of nut. Oh, okay. Or Krill because he's small. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. The episode where Krillin had hair is real fucking rough. Also, if you want to be doubly mind fucked, there is a movie where Vincent D'Onofrio, I think it's on Netflix. It just came out. Vincent D'Onofrio has a beard and hair and it's fucking shocking. I cannot look at that. I'm not going to be able to watch that movie, even though it's supposed to be very good. Can't do it. I can't do it. Bronze, do some shout outs. Hi. Hi. Hello. I'm that bronze girl. I just flew back from PAX Unplugged last night, so I was a little tired today. I apologize. I got in pretty late. But if you want to see some of the stuff I did, you can check uh, YouTube and the Twitch VODs. Um, I did a panel on DMing. It was uh, bad advice from great DMs. I don't know how great I am, but it was kind of funny, I think, in places. Uh, I was also on Acquisitions Incorporated, um, which is a dream come true. I'm sure that'll be on YouTube soon, as well as the C-Team epilogues. You can check all of that out. 
Um, this Friday, we have, I believe, the penultimate, or is it the last episode? One of those two episodes <laughs> dropping of Battle for Beyond, uh, which is the D&D series I'm DMing. And yeah, I'm honestly just playing games and uh, trying to decide between pursuing a League of Legends rating or a Halo rating. Uh, I can only choose one. So it's where I'm at mentally. Come okay. through, say hello. All right. Uh, Jesse, before we do shout outs, take a look at this photo. Yes. He looks weird. He looks funny. good. I mean, he looks fine. He looks, looks diff- at, he looks like a different person, but he that's looks Vince, good. That's With hair? Pin. Yeah. Yeah. Right, but that, like, I mean, I know what Vincent D'Onofrio looks like. What are we looking at here specifically? Just the fact he has hair, it's shocking to me. All it's right. not shocking to you? Maybe I've only no. seen him as Kingpin, so that's why it's weird. I've followed this man's career I for remember, years. Yeah, I remember Vincent D'Onofrio uh, I'm the weird one, from guys. Men in Black. <laughs> That's, I know that's a weird deep cut, but that was like as a kid. I Wait a minute, is he the like fucking that. guy Sugar. that gets taken over? Yes, uh, that's him. Shoot, shoot. Yeah. I need, I need yeah, he's that and guy. And then I remember oh him as the serial killer God. from The Cell because when I was ten years old, The Cell was my favorite <sighs> film of all time. He's in The Cell so. as well, dude. Vincent, yes. how? Yes, Vincent yes. Yes. was a fantastic actor. Yes, well, I knew how that. You know Ollie, that? Ollie, Ollie, and he was in me Full out. Metal Jacket too, right? I, yeah, he's intense. You need in sugar in that movie too. <laughs> yeah. I, need, I need sugar. I love that. I love. He's a great actor. Ollie, I'll pitch he's you a in a second. Uh, Jesse, do some shout outs. Hi, Bronze. Don't sell yourself short. I think you could do. I think you could rank in both. Don't. You could do both. Uh, hey, last night uh, we did Cox and Crendor live here in uh, beautiful Chicago. If you follow my Twitter. That right there is the uh, the office complex where everyone stares at my naked body when I wake up in the morning. And uh, shout out to all the, the weirdos over there. Um, <laughs> what is going on? Uh, yeah, so uh, that was lovely. And we tried to record it for everyone who's a Cox and Crandor fan, but I was told by the uh, team at the event that the <laughs> Pro Tools they were using crashed. So they won't. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, but it was a lovely time and, um, it, it was fun to hang out with friends, uh, flying back in literally three hours. So I'm going to close this down and head to the airport and I will, uh, see y'all when I see y'all, uh, tomorrow we start Final Fantasy 14 and Walker. So that should be emotional and, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Good luck. Is start this a early. good time to jump on? No, don't. Don't no. play that fucking game, Bronze. Don't mess. We don't. The servers are terrible right now. Don't play. Don't make it worse. Bronze, I don't know. Like, I don't think. I don't want to see you hate the sad. game. <laughs> like, I don't want to see. Like, I'm ready for the emotional mm-hmm. roller coaster I'm going to go on. Like, I know I'm going to go out the other side and be like, oh, fuck, I just need a hug. I don't want that for you. I don't want that for you. I know okay. how this I know how this goes. I don't I don't expect anything good to happen. I expect to come out the other side like, oh shit. So yeah. It's gonna be it's, I'm really excited. Jess, Jesse doesn't know. Is this know like shit, their bro. last update? No, it's the end of an arc. It's the end of a like okay. 10, 10 year story arc. Yeah. Jesse doesn't know uh-huh. shit. I've completed it. I've- He's got forty five hours of content ready to get through. And let me tell you I've this. I've muted literally anything that could possibly spoil it for me. So I have no idea what's going to happen. Very excited. And I expect to be destroyed. Here, Jesse, the, here's what I'll, I'll, I told people this yesterday on Drop Frames and the one in the show. Do not look at a single thumbnail in the Final Fantasy 14 directory. I haven't, I, I haven't even looked. Uh, <laughs> the minute I realized that I saw someone tweet, and I'm not sure who it was. Someone tweeted, stop posting your reaction videos with thumbnails of spoilers. I was yeah. like. Here's yeah, not going on YouTube for a week. So yeah, I literally Me- haven't even looked on YouTube. Jesse, yeah. remember oh, when we no, talked not- about why Yoshi P was like being so careful and not showing shit? He was a hundred percent not. He was correct. <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> they, uh, yeah, I I uh, can't wait till you finish it so we could start talking about it or even uh, progress. Yeah, don't don't even examine other players, Jesse. Don't even do that. I've removed. <laughs> 
uh, titles, titles from the game. Good. I've removed the ability to see other people's. I think I might have turned minions back on, and and because I got spoiled by a mount. Someone was riding on a mount, and I was like, "What's that?" And everyone was like, "That's from Endwalker." And I was like, "Oh well, I guess I don't care anymore." Yeah, you won't. You won't really yeah, be able to big... figure stuff out from a mount. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Unless you like Google the mount, don't do that. Uh, anyways, we're gonna get out of here. Thanks for watching the MCU crew. Uh, my stream will still be live. We're gonna do some JPNN and trailer time, and then. I guess we're going to finish the Halo campaign or try again. I got stuck in a fucking bug yesterday and I had to redo a whole level and it really bummed me out. So we're going to see if I can surpass that again. That's it. We'll see you next week. Enjoy the Spoodermans. We'll talk about it all next Monday as well as episode five of Hawkeye. We'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.